What's happening, lids and ladettes? It's Adam here. And Dan, before we start this week's episode, we've got to tell you that we are going for Christmas number one with our original song, written and sung lead vocal by our very own Finley Kulavuz. It's called Lord Has Gone. It's going to be Christmas number one. You can pre order it right now on iTunes and on Amazon Music. And on top of that, we've got a little documentary coming out on Friday, the 10th of December, showing you the entire record day at the Motor Museum Studios in of appeal that's exclusively going on patreon and it's another one of our specials to add to the lock-ins the live show the last dance we are building up this back catalogue of amazing patreon specials to go on top of the patreon exclusives that we do every week if you like me and adam on this podcast if you love this pod you get an extra hour and a half plus every wednesday as part of the patreon deal for as little as three pounds a month which is the price, the price of, of a fancy coffee or something? Hey, a fancy and fucking coffee. And you get early access to public episodes, up to 48 hours early access. Sign up now at patreon.com slash pod and enjoy this week's episode because we've already recorded it and I don't have to tell you, it's going to be a belter. Defo. Pussy. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Bloody hell. Let me just finish me morning coffee. And we're so let's just demonetize us one second in. No, oh, who cares? I'm an advert, yeah. Fucking bored of them. Google advert. <laughs> Bought them money. Free money. That's Bought shit money, though, isn't it? It's shit money. Well, I'm not asked. That's my least favourite money. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's fucking AIDS. The other day, I went I'd um, love to pie them off and just be like, let's do ours. I was on our highlights channel. Shout out if you haven't looked at it. Watching an old highlight, and I got adverts, and I got pissed off because it's YouTube advert. And I was like, oh, no, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> God, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. And I got a 28-second unskippable advert last night, and... Just turn me telly off. I was trying to show our Jack a, a video of Tom Segura doing a specific stand up routine. 28 seconds unskippable. I just didn't show me. I turned the telly off. I know. So if, if you back out and keep pressing in like five times, you don't get adverts. I didn't want to do that though. Oh. I just wanted to watch the thing. When we were in Anglesey, but they only had free view, and the kids were like utterly freaked out that they couldn't watch the very specific show they wanted to because they're used to Netflix or just downloading it on Sky and watching it on Sky, and it was just, it's on. It's just the TV and it's on. Like they were like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I don't want to watch this. And they're like, they're like trying to swipe the TV. Like, it's fucking broken. <laughs> you fucking spoiled little twats. You watch the best films then though, don't you? Watch Raster Mouse and shut the fuck up. Because you watch films that you have to watch. You end up watching films that you wouldn't use. <laughs> Literally, I've do- I haven't watched Freeview for a long time. On a holiday usually though, yeah. Yeah. Like, when you, know- you were growing up, how many channels were there? Uh, on the wireless <laughs> it was the BBC World Service that's how we found out the war had started <laughs> remember that were you were you alive when Neville that, Chamberlain came back from Berlin when that War of the Worlds thing happened on the radio yeah 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 yeah. yeah. do you know about that when they played War of the Worlds on the radio but they didn't announce what it was and people were like throwing themselves out of windows and that people thought it was real people yeah. thought it was real so they killed themselves well they did it as a radio play yeah. But they started it as a duh, 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 breaking news yeah. just to fuck with people. people. And that was like, what, the 50s where they were like, God damn it, those aliens are coming <laughs> in out the, the fucking window, Martha. In Birmingham, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and that was, in, that was my, yeah. Imagine doing something. Didn't someone kill himself during halftime at Istanbul? Not there, but like during the game. I don't think so. I, I heard that rumor years ago. Yeah, It's a slightly yeah. different story, though, that, Carl, isn't it? <laughs> it's That's not. some <laughs> mentally ill person who's a bit too attached to a Liverpool football club. This is like, oh, they did a radio play that scared people. Are these are all mentally sane people you, who kill you themselves? Are, no, but that was a national phenomenon in America. Yeah, yeah. They all bricked it. There was a, uh, a film about an earthquake in the same era, and a theatre loosened all the bolts on the, on the seating. Um... And there's so much bass in the film that it made the fucking place rattle. And it was a, about an earthquake. Well, and back that was then, one of the thing, and genuinely, people fled out of the building thinking it was about to. Sick. Back then, they didn't have the technology to do the bass, so they just got a really fat person to fart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. It's an overhead, that. Good. <laughs> Into your home did, goal. You, did you apply for it? Or? <laughs> hey. I wasn't alive back then. All right, good save. <laughs> good save. Good save. <laughs> Good save. Otherwise, that would have been stupid. I am Rosedale, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that thing of, like, fucking with people, in it That it makes it more... As soon as you're like, oh, yeah, it's just a film. But it fits... Um, like, what was the one... Blair, the Blair Witch Project? Yeah. 
where I was at college when that came out and it was a thing like you all went round to someone's house and you all watched it and it became a thing to be scared of it. I kind of like that sort of stuff yeah. where they're fucking with you. I thought Shrek 2 was real when it first Yeah, 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 because it was scary, wasn't it? Because how does a dragon fuck a donkey <laughs> and vice versa? That's frightening. You were like, oh my God. Shrek Spoilers. Two. He knew Shrek 1 was fake. <laughs> but no, this one's real. No, Shrek 1 makes a lot more sense. Why are the dragon donkey babies? That's wrong. No, that's possible. Of course it's possible. Is that how that works? A dragon... You can cross no, no, species. sorry, sorry. You, you can crossbreed... What? Species? Imaginary species. Cross, crossbreed dragons and donkeys? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be harder if the donkey was the woman. I think... Because a dragon's dick too big. That's the problem. And it would ruin the donkey's that's pussy. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a fucking dragon dick on you. Yeah, spitting fire. But like, like that little donkey, fucking that enormous dragon pussy. It's fine. Wow. <laughs> wow. What a visual for everyone. Early doors. I'm right though. Adam thought donkeys that was real. can't fuck elephants. <laughs> Fact. No, I'm just trying to. No, I'm just trying to. What is the closest thing to a dragon? Like you're just thinking big. Dragons are real. What did you talk about? Right. Just one on the Welsh flag. Right. What? You can't cross speak. What are you on about? I I can I can put up with so much of your bullshit, but you're like, yeah, donkeys can fuck rhinos. And that's how you get rhinonkey donkeys. Fact. Yeah, I don't go. I, I don't can go. You not cross safari species? park. I go Adam's fucking zoo. <laughs> With all these horrific experiments that Doctor Rose been doing. Like, right, a chicken has fucked a squirrel. Possible. Yeah, end it. What do you reckon the the two funkiest animals you could breed are? I literally no idea, but hippo and an eagle. <laughs> eagle, an eagle, flying hippo. Be sick, now. Oh, you going that way? Yeah, a flying hippo. Well, well that's better than a swimming eagle, isn't it? A flying hippo. Yeah, that's all the hippos need, isn't it? Just wings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine the size of the fucking wings a hippo would. There isn't an big. animal on earth that would turn down wings if you offered it to them. <laughs> It would just look like a bit of a fat gay dragon, wouldn't it? Fat gay dragon? <laughs> it would. <laughs> yeah. But you'd, t you'd have wings if I offered you them, wouldn't you? If I went to you, right, I can click my fingers right now. You'll have wings. You'll be able to fly like an eagle forever. You know something you say no? Just click your fingers and I get wings. Yeah. And they work as well. So right. You're not like a wasp. Well, yeah, but you've seen films where they've got what? angels. That's mad as well, isn't it? Bees can't actually fly. So focus now, Adam. <laughs> focus. Because you're being full spastic, Adam. Really early uh, doors. No, whoa, 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 hang on. What? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> He's got such bad ADHD. Elab elaborate. You'd have, you, no, no, hang on. You cannot be like, you'd have wings if you could. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. Bees and wasps can't fly. And they fuck hippos and dragons and donkeys. Shrek 3, no. puss in boots. No, you can't. Focus. An insect can't fuck Focus. a mammal. Focus. Focus. Bees can't fly. No. Oh, man. Explain. <laughs> It's, so, it's just too retard. Like it, I can entertain the retardedness for a bit, but it's how he. It's some days. It's the coffee. Of course, he's had a fucking nineteen shots of coffee and can't stay on one thought for eight seconds. Would you have wings? There's literally so much opportunity to talk about that. Insects, flies, wasps. No, it's okay, boots. we'll come back to that in a bit. Pin Go on, them. tell us about your wings. Can't. <laughs> well, Can't. You, would, you would have them though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I would, but they don't look easy to upkeep. Sometimes I can't be bothered trimming my beard. I just think wings and feathers in the bed, nah. Like, I'd get it, you want to fly, yeah. but I'd rather have, like, robotic sort of... and then fuck off. Okay. You know what I mean? Rather than angel wings. That'd be a great invention. Like a jetpack, but wings. Right. <laughs> Good. <laughs> just write that down. Steve, could Put you get on that, please, that. mate? Yeah, yeah. I know you're doing a bit of graphic design in the corner. That's actually but... a really good idea, though. You smashed that. Right, cool. Yeah. Obviously Would you have wings? Yeah. Right. Especially the new jetpack wings that we've just invented. <laughs> but what but but then you've got to think about the ramifications for your life. You what? won't be able to gig normally. Why? Because people are just, just people are just turn up going, Yeah, I don't really care about your views on like modern life. Just get your wings out. I'd have a fucking great view on modern life from the sky. <laughs> <Nailed it. laughs> oh, what's your bullshit about wasps? <laughs> No, we're not done with wings. No, I am now. 
What's the what's the wasp thing? I don't know whether it's about wasps, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely about bees. How bees. many shots in the coffee, Adam? Just out of interest. Uh, the one I had before that was a double shot, <laughs> and this is a double shot as well. So this is the fourth. The old quadruple. Um, you have IBS, you say? Yeah, do you? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, bees, uh, technically speaking, like from a f- like a physics standpoint, can't fly. No, they shouldn't be able to fly. Yeah, but that well, that's, they can't that's fly. The same. You've seen them. Well, based on the physical universe as we know it, no, they're not flying. That's fallen with style. That's Buzz Lightyear, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Bees Lightyear. Um. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, bees don't uh, 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 obey laws of physics, but they can fly. But they well, shouldn't be able to. Well, that's the same thing to me. No, no, no not being able to do something and shouldn't be able to do something is different. Crucially, it's very different. You're like, well, apparently bees can't fly. What about the ones that can fly? Yeah, they're fucking wizards then. <laughs> don't trust them. Well, maybe bees are magic. You just I don't know. live by physics, you know. Yeah. That's my life. <laughs> well, don't bees hold the, the key to um, the environment? The, the, did you just have a little key in your hand? Yeah, a little key because bees are small. But if the bees are fucked, we're fucked, aren't we? No. The that's, ecology. A, that's a common misconception. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, the other one is bees can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, that's a lie. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. Oh, look at them bees not flying. Off to shag kids and eat pizza. <laughs> it was a order. bee that did 9-11. <laughs> a bastard. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you know, it's just a big fucking bee. The Talibus. <laughs> Nailed it. Osama Buzz Laden. Nailed it again. What did you say? Yeah, uh, Finn said that, sorry. Huh? Finn's already said I that. can't hear it because he hasn't got a mic. Um, anything else? Alf. Al- Al- yeah, Al- but the, the idea that, like, basically, if bees all went away tomorrow, all that would happen is that we'd only have enough honey to last, like, another six months. Um, no, I don't think, I think you've missed the point. Honey would be like Bitcoin. Be yeah. like, fucking, you really. Have you got money in uh, crypto? Now I've got it in. Honey, it's real. That's the way forward. Yeah, yeah. I think you've missed the point there. I don't think the lack of honey is going to end mankind. No. It's, the, it's the ecology, isn't it? I think it's the ecology. Cheerios would need a new. Uh, that would be a big a, one. A new side project, wouldn't they? Yeah, because they'd lose honey Cheerios. And Wofford, they'd need a new nickname. Yeah. No, because they could still be the bees. That's oh, that's Brentford. Sorry. What we even? I that's mean, the colours. It's the Hornets. Hornets. The Hornets same yeah, they're thing. cunts actually, aren't they? I've never seen one, but they're, aren't they like just basically jacked up steroid using wasps? Yeah, they're like Hell wasps or doozies. Uh, put simply, we cannot live without bees. We can. So says the Freddie had a bee expert on his podcast and said it's bollocks. Well then. Yeah, Freddie's had some pretty weird experts on though, hasn't he? Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's always the go-to for actual facts, but I know what? We're definitely not. I love people who comment that. that that's wrong. Yeah, we know. Saying it on purpose. I mean, it'd be uh, it'd be easier to comment when we're right. Yeah. Do you know what, Jesus? At twenty nine <laughs> minutes thirty two seconds. I think they were right. <laughs> well, that's not what it's about. <laughs> uh, can we tell them about the live stream? Because yes. I'm very excited, and it's going to be here in no time. Sunday, the nineteenth of December, eight pm start. We're doing our annual live stream at Hot Water Comedy Club in Liverpool. Uh, the tickets to be in the room sold out in Six that minutes. amount of time. And you can now buy the pay-per-view. It's a tenner. You can get it from hotwatercomedy.co.uk. This is th- this video never goes on Patreon. We never put it on YouTube. It's To see this show and the plans we've got th- for this one, it's going to be a wild one. Uh, you've either got to be in the room or watch the pay-per-view. The pay-per-view is available for a full week after the show, so you can re-watch it back for a week, a full week. You can not watch it on the night and watch it three days later. But after that week's done, this show disappears forever. No one else will ever see what goes on. What happens in the room stays in the room. It's a Christmas party, isn't it? Yeah. It's a nice little tradition we're developing. It was born out of necessity last year because of the lockdowns and all that fucking bullshit. But uh, now it's amazing because people, wherever they are in the world, who aren't able to try and get tickets for a live show can come and see us in the comfort of their own fucking living room. Mm, and it's, there's or a big, bedroom. There's a big thing, isn't there? No one's going to wank, are they? It's a big thing. There's a big thing. No one's going to be like, I've got the laptop out. I I'm telling you right it. now, everyone at home, you've got my consent to wank over me. If you want to spar while I'm doing me shit... Go for it. Yeah, do it on live streams though, eh? Oh. No, don't come to the tour and 
I yeah, no, you have Adam to be... As I'm said, it was all right. Well, yeah, you can't get a dick out <laughs> on a live show because not everyone in the room is consented. But if you're in your house... No, but you've, you're have sick of uh, stand innovations now. They're hack, aren't they? You, you're a maverick in comedy, and you want That'd a sitting... That'd be fucking amazing, wouldn't it? Wank yeah. Your whole audience just squirted all over the gaff at the end of your show. A wank ovation? Yeah. That wouldn't be nice. Just to hear 1,700 people... Oh, that'd be Eating a hell of a noise. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you make that noise with your mouth when you're wanking? Ma- make a wank noise. What? Is there a wank noise? <laughs> oh! Is yours noisy? Yeah. Oh! Ooh. It's not. It doesn't. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> you're on a roller coaster? Yeah. That's pretty much what I sound like. No, it's not. It, is. it isn't. Oh. Kill yourself. Oh. No. End, end your life. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, anything more than a weird like fucking oh lord <laughs> do you do you masturbate like an intimidated black American person oh oh my god damn oh lord I didn't know it'd be like this oh, can I get a witness please Jesus oh hallelujah that has a finish yeah Oh, yeah, you can't. You've got to end on the hallelujah. Yeah. And God damn, I think God damn. Yeah. That's yeah. when no one's in. When someone's in, you're like, oh, Lord, Lord, mercy. <laughs> I'm Thomas. The live stream, guys. The live, yeah, keep it on track. The live stream. Woo. Live stream yeah. where we will masturbate. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. As Americans. There's an announcement. Is there an announcement, Carl? <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a big announcement, and um, there's li- something really big coming up next stream. year that uh, there's going to be tickets on sale for very limited tickets, less tickets than we <laughs> that we could absolutely sell uh, for something we're doing early next year. We're going to announce it live on stage on the night, so only people watching the live stream or in the room will we're hear get it. The link, um, they'll get the link there, and then, and I imagine that this thing that we're announcing will sell out faster than these tickets did. So if you want to hear that announcement, oh, oh, you got to be watching. God. Lord. God, I wish I was a black American. I really do. Mm. Just watch the videos from the States. And I was just think, oh, I've just born white, Lancastrian, like, you all right? Rubbish. You got to think about that. Oh, the, Lord. Every bit of material that I've ever done would be better. God damn, I say God damn. But what about systemic racism? Who the fuck is drinking? <laughs> Systemic racism. Yeah, you got to consider that. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's one of the perks of the job, isn't it? When you get there. How would I know? As a white, as an old honky living in <laughs> Preston, I've never... Are we allowed to say that? That's our word, isn't it? Honky? Yeah. Everyone's allowed to say honky. Right. Everyone's allowed to say honky, because it, it, is, it is racial, but it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah, because it doesn't go... Like any. when El Hajj Juff called a ball boy at Everton honky... <laughs> And the ball boy at Everton lodged a complaint with the football club and the police were informed because there'd been a racist incident at the football. And Al Hajj Juff was questioned. I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. He That's went, absolutely hilarious. The ball boy wouldn't give him the ball back. And Al Hajj Juff was a footballer. When was that? Early noughties? He was in the noughties, wasn't he? And we he was, signed him on the back of an impressive display at the 2002 World Cup for Senegal. Yeah, we he also signed entire, Salaf Diaw. Went through an entire season without scoring a goal. So he basically a made his way round the Premier League for about eight years. Wherever, he, if you end up at Blackburn, you're like, oh yeah, you're on your way out. And he was an horrible cunt. But he asked for the ball from a ball boy. I went, hurry up, honky. And the white ball boy in Liverpool, in Merseyside, which is 99% white, went... I've been racially abused <laughs> and told his fucking manager who informed the club, who informed the police. So I'm all I'm saying is it was racial, but I call bullshit on that being a hate word. Yeah. Michael Moore calls himself a cold ass honky, doesn't he? So. Right. Yeah. It's allowed. Michael Moore's the. the I'd lo- I can't. That's why he's I, always wearing that big coat. Can you imagine that day when, <laughs> when the ball boy was like, just, <laughs> just like re- really upset. And after the game, obviously like as an Everton fan, probably in the academy or something. And he's like, is everything all right, Mark? He's like, no, <laughs> I don't think it is. I've got something to tell you. What is it, lad? I think I've been racially abused by El Haji Diouf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did he say? He said, give me the ball, you fucking honky. <laughs> and I'm white. <laughs> right, 
let's go and speak to Steve, the manager. Yeah, let's do it. Do you reckon it's okay <laughs> to call non-white people a honky? What do you mean? Do you know, like, if you get... Obviously, like, if you get in an argument with someone of a different race, racism is off the table, isn't it? You're not allowed to be racist, but th- you are to white people. Like, if you get into an argument... Let's say you both try and pull into the same petrol pump. You. I'm black, and you're white. No, you <laughs> and, like, uh, an Asian guy. Lorraine Kelly. Yeah, an Asian man like Lorraine Kelly. Let's say you and... Um, you daft gun. What's the newsreader from Channel 4 called? Zainab Badawi. Krishna and Guru Murthy. Krishna and Guru, Guru Murthy. Murthy, yeah. is it Murthy? Uh, you've nailed it. Krishna and Guru Murthy. Krishna and Guru Murthy. Murthy. You and him Akbar. What? both go to the same petrol pump. Yeah. Right? And he gets out and he's like, you fucking honky cunt. Right? You obviously... <laughs> Krishna and Guru Murthy. The famed award-winning Channel 4 newsreader pulls up and goes, you fucking honky cunt. And I'm like, is that Christian Guru Murphy? It is, isn't it? Hang on. I'm being racially abused. What am I allowed to say back to him? Yeah, can you call him a honky? Do you know what I mean? Because you can't, you can't use the traditional racial slurs that would be associated with people from his ethnic background. Right. Can I, can I call him a honky? <laughs> is that okay? I think you can call... Anyone a honky? Can you? I mean, literally, your nan. I think your, to your s- daughter's teacher. Everyone will be like, "What?" It doesn't mean anything. I, I think, think if you use a, an Asian racial slur, that might be a problem. I think that there are some races that hate white people so much, and absolutely justifiably so. That if you called them a honky, that would be more offensive than like the N word to them. Okay, what I want you to do now <laughs> is to test that out in South London next time you're there. Okay. When you get into some SO garage, SO4 court dispute with a gentleman <laughs> of a different ethnicity, yeah. try your honky theory. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I'd call him the M word, obviously. That'd be really offensive. I know I'd really piss him off. You fucking honky. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to start calling everyone honky then. It derives from honky tonk. Yeah. Which is a, a, a bar that provides country music. So it's country folk. Yeah. It's a very American. Yeah. It's a very Americanized it, thing. What about the C word for white people? Is that a lot? Do the word. What? Caucasian. Caucasian. No. <laughs> Something you eat with cheese. Cheese and. Cracker? Yeah. I don't know if it was a naughty one or not. Was that naughty? Did you literally just say the C word and then refuse to say cracker? <laughs> No, I don't know. That's a naughty one. You're, I, a fancy you're, right now. you're a white person, Carl. What would you be offended if 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 we I could got offend an, another white person? I don't do you that. know what I really fancy? A Ritz c word. <laughs> <laughs> Some cheese and c words. Hey, that's our word. <laughs> a Jacob's what, cream retarded? c word. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can we call each other cracker ass bitches then? Is that better? No, that's uh, uh, I misogy- think calling that's ourselves misogynistic. Cra- well, cracker doesn't cracker come from cracking the whip? Oh, so maybe then, yeah. Like slavery. I knew I was right to be a bit yeah. cautious about that one. So Colin Again, is- it's a very Americanized thing because there were, were there any plantations in Dovecot. Liverpool was built on slavery. Right. It was? Yeah. Yeah. Adam's right, it comes from a it comes from that derivation, yes. So I think yeah, maybe- there wasn't plantations, was it? There wasn't anyone The bread mm-hmm. plantations. It's again it's American, but the, yeah, They all the- worked at Cain's brewery before it was the Bosnock market. They made them build it and make the beer. <laughs> Act. It's a well-known fact. Now work in the Gulf. Yeah. Well, cracker is surely offensive because you're saying, I would, I'm a cracker, I would crack the whip. Yeah, so I knew I was being cautious, right? He's right. <clears throat> but again, I know, but it, it, again, it, it, you don't have to be cautious because it's only white people that could be like, hey, come on. <laughs> That's not all right. It is all right. Just erring on the side of the caution, Dan. Wow, you are very careful. <laughs> is there anything? <laughs> Lorraine Kelly's a cracker, I tell you that. <laughs> is there, is there, that ever been said <laughs> please promise me because you're getting quite famous now please tell me if you ever if you ever meet Lorraine Kelly like, call her a cracker tell you what, Lorraine Kelly you're a fucking cracker and she'll be like oh god that's so nice of you thank you I've really been I feel good about myself now Adam and you'll be like <laughs> no cracker ass bitch I'll call her a cracker ass bitch yeah, I'll be like gonna... listen you Scottish cracker ass bitch wow wow, wow. cracker's not the problem is it <laughs> you cracker ass honky bitch Go on, tell me the news or whatever it is you do. You don't even know what she does. She's 
She's not in history in this. She's just a general. Why are you there? She's <laughs> yeah. on the door. Go on, do your Go thing. on, do the news, Lorraine Kelly, or whatever you don't do, weather fucking bitch. Is she a weatherman? Weatherwoman? She's a weatherman, yeah. <laughs> She's a weatherman. She's a cracker ass honky weatherman. Hey, now the weatherman comes. Uh, I like Lorraine Kelly. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't call her a cracker ass bitch <laughs> if I met her. Cracker ass honky bitch. <laughs> weatherman. <clears throat> what's the what's the more sort of British white you slang? Bag cracker, pipe wielding cracker ass honky bitch. Because cracker and honky are definitely American. You shortbread eating bagpipe wielding cracker ass honky bitch. Because cracker and honky are totally American. <laughs> what would be the more British barbs? Pasty you sort of fucking that. milky way. You know, pasty milk, cunt. You milky bar looking cunt. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You Kendall mint cake looking fucking knobhead. <laughs> That is racist. <laughs> Kendall Mint Cake? All right, yeah, yeah. You look like someone's filled in the middle of a polo. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. Imagine that. Ella, that's you. Can we make some. You look like the fucking middle of a custard cream. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you fucking donut old cunt. Uh, American donut. I'm having donut as American there, really. Oh, yeah, you don't, can't get them over there. F- no, but they are American, <laughs> aren't they? Custard cream is so much more. Try going to America and be like, can I have a custard cream? What the fuck are you talking about, boy? Cornish pasty cunt. Cornish pasty. Are they white? People who make them are. Nice one. Good. You chicken gravy, but that white one, cunt. <laughs> Not the brown chicken gravy. The white sauce one that comes in pasties, cunt. Gives the ball. Kiss the ball. <laughs> you Cornish pasty making fucking custard cream filling cunt. <laughs> I think we need to workshop a couple of them. I like where we're going with it though. Good though. Yeah. Anti white racism. Finally. New kitchen roll looking twat. Oh. The kitchen roll. But not blitz because that's blue. It exactly. could be cold. Could be yeah. cold. Don't yeah. want it in America either. You tip ex cunt. That's a good one, though. Nice. It sounds. Yeah. You tip ex looking fucking tit. Covered up my mistake <laughs> in my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> fucking smooth white correction aid. <laughs> oh, the old bottle. I like them ones. You smell. <laughs> you fucking Highland Terrier. <laughs> I've lost it. You fucking gift shop rubber looking cunt. Gift shop rubber? Uh, rubbers. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And some of them are pink. And, and they when you rub- get sunburned. Oh yeah. And the the myth said you could rub pen out. I mean you did just rip your page to bits. You couldn't do the pen <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did you write there? Nothing, because I've gone through two sheets. Now let's you do sheet? No, nah, it's offensive. No, no, that's it. <laughs> let's, now let's do the other races. On the live stream, we'll be doing all the other ethnicities. You know, for fairness. Yeah. For fairness. For fairness. For fairness. Uh, I think we should do the blacks next. Good job he didn't say the C word. <laughs> Cracker. <laughs> you rich biscuit motherfucker. Uh, this is so contentious. Um, I've got a heartburn. We're talking about the live stream. It's going to be great. It it's is going to be, be well, last year we This is the stuff we put out publicly. Imagine what we do when we can put it behind a paywall and only make it available for a week. I think we're blurring those lines. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> about a year ago, we were like, oh, public episode, watch your P's and Q's a little bit. Now we're like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah, blah. Um, can I have a poo break? Yeah, isn't it mad in this podcast that of all that absolute nonsense, the bit that I got most annoyed about was you going, uh, bees can't fly. <laughs> No, I had a problem with none of it, apart from that. Uh, poo break, because he's had 14 coffees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hell has frozen over. We've finally been fucking nominated for a fucking award. We've been nominated by the legends over at podbiblemag.com in the comedy section of this year's awards on their website. We're very excited. We want to win this one. It's a public vote. Go to popbiblemag.com right now and vote for us. Fuck everyone else. We're the best. And if you follow us on socials, if you don't follow us on socials, at have a word pod, and then retweet, share things. If you see it, give it a like. Give this video a like. Subscribe. Do everything. Rub your tits on our podcast. <laughs>
That's staying in. Yeah, no. No, no, that'll do. Yeah, bring the uh, bell as well. Rub your tits on our podcast. Thank you. Get on me. <laughs> the, that section will start with you whispering Michael Barrymore into the microphone. <laughs> and I and you'll never know why. <laughs> and I hope it stays in. You'll never know why. Can't believe it. I hope you find your dad. Anyway. <laughs> and gone. That is not what we were talking that about. That isn't what we were talking about. I thought what would be funny is to suggest that Michael Barrymore might be your dad. Oh, no, he's not. I think it works. You don't know that for sure, though. Neither do you. Your mum might have been bummed by Michael Barrymore and then, like, Marimot? siphoned to come out of her ass into a pussy. Like, oh. And then that made you. Do you know who's oh. not your dad? <sighs> eh? It could be yours. Could be. <sighs> you don't know. I don't know. None of us know that Michael <laughs> Barrymore is not our actual <laughs> biological dad. Can't He's be sure. Schrodinger's Barrymore. He both is and isn't at the same time. <laughs> Schrodinger's Michael Barrymore. <laughs> if is Michael Barrymore. If dad. my Michael Barrymore bums someone to death in a forest, allegedly, and no one witnesses it. Did it happen? Yeah, you've just said it did. Good. <laughs> sure. I'll be quiet then. Wag wag street horse. Question for you. Would you rather <coughs> never be able to... <laughs> by the way, if you don't get in the reference, it's because you're a pube. Would you rather never be able to watch any sport again or never be able to buy new clothes and instead have to fix your old ones? Adam, this also includes trainers. Have a good one, boys. It's from Reese. I've got enough clothes to last forever. Yeah. I've got fat clothes. I've got thin clothes. I've got somewhere in the middle clothes. I've got four pairs of trainees that I haven't even worn yet. I'll be all right. I need sport. You would be in a great position if everyone had to do it. Like it was a choice that everyone made. But I, like, because if everyone was like, fuck, everyone would choose sport. Most of Liverpool would choose sport. I'd just be like, I'll just invest in sewing kits. But if it was just you doing it, I think it would do your head in something rotten. Yeah, but it's still better than not watching sport. You love getting new clobber on, don't you? I do. It's my favourite thing to do. I think after what Shag- Liverpool, after Liverpool and that yeah what's the league table of things you love to do footy eat roast dinners footy's one F- footy's up there it's hard to separate the top few so common is up there <laughs> <laughs> you need to separate it because you can't combine it like oh fucking love Champions League games Anfield and coming at the same time like oh god a fourth against Barca <laughs> when Divock and Iggy put that in against Wolves the other night that was close Um Coming, f- watching footy. Um, coming, is that just... Does that or, include or sex? sex? Yeah, but that is. Yeah. That's the point of sex, isn't it? Okay. so He's a very, very generous lover. Okay, sex coming. Wank coming. We'll separate them. <laughs> Chat, Sam, how are you, love? You all right? You okay? <laughs> oh, no, I can't believe you don't enjoy the content of the podcast. W- watching there. footy, uh, especially when Liverpool are winning trophies. Um, buying clothes, buying trainers... Um, doing good, cool gigs. Good, doing good gigs. Yeah, not, and, dri- and not driving to them, doing them. Yeah, doing them. And the best bit of comedy is when you walk in the door, is on the stage, all the shit bits are, as you're out of the building. You're like, oh god. Yeah, I'm starting to really enjoy the the pre gig build ups as well though. And I've got a little plan for me tour to make the backstage bit a bit more fun, especially with Carl and Thomas Green coming with me. Hundred percent coming back to that. Um, where does uh so clothes are up there and in there where do legs of lamb come in there because I mean, I know that food is right okay sex coming what about sha- Xiaomi's eating a lamb roast dinner sh- what about Wank Shmounies coming. snooker what about Xiaomi's Shumai's. Shumai's. Shumai's that's it they're, they're not as good as a roast they are good right. but they don't roast is like god tier they're just like top tier so now we're getting down to sort of fifth or sixth in the Adam Rowe yeah. life table sex coming roast dinners especially with lamb wank coming footy Where's playing footy? Um, it's out. It, it's below everything I've said so far. Right, but it's up there. It's like the next one down, probably. Yeah, it's good. It's good to know. <laughs> do you prefer <laughs> sex coming or snooker, Dan? Sex coming or snooker? Yeah, a sport that I don't really enjoy or play. Mm-hmm. Uh, sex coming. What's sex? You look I like act- you play snooker. I play snooker as about as much as I sex come. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, yeah. Can you give him the mic? In a documentary? What's the game of me and you, isn't there, playing pool on the documentary? Finn, I don't want to talk about that. That was an absolute <laughs> abortion of a game of fucking... It was like watching pool. people with no arms it was, play it snooker. Was, to the point where it went beyond like, oh, we're being crap on purpose. It was like, this is humiliating. <laughs> and I was ashamed of me and you at the same time. <laughs> Watch the documentary. It's out. Oh, God, I hope he's not put that. That'll be a real lull in the documentary. Um, of I Laura's hope the whole game. game's in it. But if you had to give up clothes, if you had to give up football, oh, it'd be awful. If you knew everyone else was watching it. I can't give up football, no. especially if everyone else can watch it. I, no. No. You just have to make do. I, I think I'd genuinely... Oh, this is not a good thing for me, Mrs. Stewart, is it? I think I'd rather give up sex. I'd rather wank forever. Be I think. Genuinely. Than never be able to watch footy again. Yeah. It's mad, that, really. I think so. As long as women can wank me off. Right, NFL <laughs> or sex. That's a big caveat. Oh, what, you're allowed hand jobs? Yeah. What about I could give up pussy for fussy. I thought you hated hand jobs. <laughs> what about all the... Um... <laughs> uh, if, if you were like, right, I've been watching the NFL for 10 years and I've never enjoyed a sport more. If you were like, no more sex again or the NFL... I know what Laura would choose. <laughs> She'd be like, how big do you want your TV? <laughs> <laughs> Let, you know what you do, babe? 4K Sky Sports. <laughs> She'd be setting me up, tucking me in the garden office. Have you got, have you got some popcorn? I have. I've got some pretzel as well. <laughs> Big fat cunt that's never getting laid. <laughs> Ooh, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm picking sex over watching footy, but if you put playing footy in with watching footy, I'm picking footy. Yeah, I, I, I'm, you not, love I'm not. sex though, don't you? I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking, saying man. this as a dig, but that is partly because of you're an Everton fan, isn't it? Yeah, like, abso oh, absolutely. Yeah, of course like, if, it is. Yeah, yeah. Like you could give that up because it generally just makes it would improve my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've had your glory days, haven't you? When you were three years old, they won the cup. Yeah, I remember that. Was it? Yeah. Was it ride out? It was Paul ride out. Paul yeah. ride out. Uh, yeah. Danker shirt. Oh, good knowledge, Dan. I love it. Yeah, but I was 38 then, so... Because I'm old. From before. Way before. That's when Long he's from. Long time ago. From the way, way back. <laughs> oh, Papa Dan! Uh, clothes. Could I give him up? Because I dress badly. No, but a you're lot changing of the time. it up, Dan. You're starting to come into the fucking... I'm dressing more scouts. You I, I love this jumper. I, I haven't worn it for a while. You, you, dress, you dress pretty good. Getting you there. didn't, though. Why? You you didn't you, you yeah me game's gone up in the past yeah, yeah. totally yeah. yeah I used to dress better when I was in my early twenties I dressed better than I do like you you've gone the other way like yeah. uh, now you've got some sharp clubber my Laura takes the piss my wife takes the piss she's like this is new and I'm like yeah so have I told you what I'm gonna wear she for me can birthday? tell that I'm hanging around with twenty nine year old scouts lads you look better then yeah I know I feel better yeah you should do get on me get on me lad. The thing is, you don't have to just start like shopping a fucking Tesco's F and F range when you're forty. You can still go to flannels and stuff. Right. Well, I don't <laughs> really know what flannels is. It's like a high end shop, part of Harvey. Uh, I'm not in. I'm into it. I, honestly, the t-shirts that keep getting offered to me on it. This is friend or foe. If anyone knows the people who run friend or foe, the t-shirt and hoodie company, get onto them. We've got 60, 70,000 people watching these in the first month or so, listening as well. And I want some free t-shirts from front. This is where I'm at. I found it. Instagram has worked me out. Instagram is part dressing me. It's like, Dan, I know you're looking at girls with tattoos and tits, but what about this t-shirt? And I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, Instagram's worked me out with trainees. My right. my, uh, my account on Instagram is just trainees and the occasional bummo. Same. Bummo. It's Instagram mean? dark. He's got the dark Instagram. You've got yeah. dark Instagram? Yeah. On the dark web? The Instagram. The Instagram? <laughs> they didn't come up, they didn't spend long. Instagram. <laughs> Instagram. What, you're not allowed on a, you're not allowed a bum hole on Instagram, are you? You're not allowed a nipple on Instagram. You're allowed a man a nipple, nipple, though. What's that about? Hey! So have you cut a man's nipples I have nipples! And put them Could you the milk woman? me, Greg? Uh, free the nip. Free the nip, innit? Yeah. I like a big nip. Do you? <laughs> I like a little, but like, oh, no. solid, like a solid one. It has oh, to be pink. What, a little fucking, little pinger? Pinger. Yeah. A pinger. Do you know what I, I like them to, do you know I like them to feel like on my tongue? Like a little midget gem. Oh. They're the sweets. Yeah. Like really hard. Yeah. 
and, and green and black on flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a rugby I, stud. I like the areola. You know the lumpy bits. I like it to be like it's you a good know. goalie. Yeah. <laughs> good French goalie. And you like his nipples? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nipples are so important to the boob. They're integral. If yeah. a bad nipple, a bad nipple ruins a boob, in my opinion. A yeah. bad nipple ruins a, bo- a boob. Yeah. What's a bad nipple when it's like around the side or on the side? Like a, a, a burger. Oh, I tell you what, nipples are very rarely just in the wrong space, wrong spot for a laugh, aren't they? Yeah. Like you can, they can be big and they can be <laughs> yeah, No, but it's very, it's very rare you see like, oh yeah, my nipple's right here, but this one's a bit weird. It's usually a, a botched boob job if the nipple's misplaced. Oh, well it? then I'm a bit more sympathetic. Do you ever watch the program Botched? You ever watch it? Mm. Have you seen it? No, oh. not much telly. My missus watches it all the time, and oh. it's just plastic surgery. But there's these two doctors in, I think they, it must be in LA, California. <laughs> Definitely. It's not in Wigan, is it? Like, <laughs> oh my God, babe, don't worry about it. <laughs> my fucking nipple's in the wrong place. But they, it is, babe. That's on your face. They fix bad cosmetic surgery, but some of the cases, the guy's just like, I just want a bigger tits, and I've got four tits on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you go, babe? Why did you get four tits in your ass? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> ass. Ears. 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 Yeah. They, they're they also a bit bitchy as well, aren't they? I've seen, I've, I've managed to watch a little bit of botch when they're like, oh my God, come in, we're going to fix everything. And then they do like an off, like like a cut to, and he's like literally talking, I've never seen anything so fucked up. <laughs> he's really me like, oh my God, what the hell happened? Yeah, it's some of the jobs Her that get done are horrendous. There's some like where they've had like a nose go from like this and like they've literally tried to make it small and it's got somehow bigger and they're like, so how, how's he done that? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And they're like, oh, we're going to fix it. And then it's the easiest job in the world for them because as long as it's even just as big as it was before the first surgery, they look like geniuses. What's the most common botch? Is it boobs? Tits. Yeah. It's the most common cosmetic surgery after like... The ass tits. one is a new thing last few years, isn't it? I've Where been thinking about getting my ass done. Uh, yeah. That's the one that can go wrong, and then you you can't sit down again. And I'd say if we're doing my league table, sitting down is definitely oh, my top ten. the most underrated thing in the world. Is you imagine sitting if you're like down. Carl, I've got some bad news. Your ass job, your heiress job, has gone wrong, and you're not going to be able to sit down for two months. No. Sam moans at me for sitting down too much, but like, so for example, yesterday I did a big towel wash, <laughs> right? What? A towel wash? A big towel wash? Like loads of towels. Right. I just washed and dried loads of towels and we've got a washer dryer machine. So then to fold them, I sat on the couch. She was like, why are you sitting down? I was like, why would I stand up to fold towels? That's correct. Yeah. Sitting down is one of the best things you can ever do yeah. on any part of the day. <laughs> are you about 10 years from a mobility scooter though? Because <laughs> that, that, you know, there is a point when sitting down becomes like... I'm going to get a mobility motorbike. Or one of those choppers. No, just a motorbike that I can drive around the house. No, there is what you've described. There it exists. Some mobility scooters have been made to look like you know the easy rider, like get your motor running. No, that's not what I want. I it's want like a Kawasaki with stabilizers on. Cool. A super bike to go to the toilet. <laughs> cool. Seven hundred and fifty cc. You're saying shit. it like I'm an idiot, as if you wouldn't be round all the time having a go. I won't be round. Can <laughs> <laughs> you go with your super bike wheel, Yeah. Imagine yeah, driving a fucking super bike round the Asda. <laughs> Many dead. <laughs> Out of the way, but <laughs> I need bread. So what, you, you getting your ass done? I think I got washed over before. I just want, I feel like my ass is too small for me body. You're a man, it doesn't matter. It does. You, you want a fat ass? I, I, I look like Gru from Despicable Me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> triangle. You like, are an inverted, then, yeah. You're an upside down triangle. But no, you, but I'm not even that. I'm like, my legs are like a triangle, and then there's a fuck. Do you know what I'm like? I'm like a golf ball on a tee. That's exactly what I am. So <laughs> my legs go to a tee, and then there's just this big ball on top. And I just feel like if my ass was a bit, you'd look like a fucking pigeon. <laughs> Toffee apple. You just look like lumps, and then little. You've got quite thin legs. Yeah, I want to be like Nicki Minaj. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Ricky Minaj. That's what I call myself. Why would you change your name? Oh. Ricky Minaj. <laughs> Ricky Minaj, you know, because my nickname's Ricky. Adam Ricky Rowe. <laughs> what, what did you get called at school, Adam? Ricky. <laughs> I named it myself, but uh, didn't catch on. Um, well, Alan Minaj doesn't make much so sense. So you're going to have wings and a Nicky Minaj big fat ass. That'd be fucking great. Wow. Yeah. A lot in it, guys. Yeah, what cosmetic surgery would you get? I think I've asked that question. And I think it, it has been done, yeah. but uh, wherever it gets done, don't say dick, don't it's boring. in London. That's where I'm going for in my London. Cosmetic. Turkey's yes. the best place to go. No, you know? 
No, Why not London? going to fucking countries, sorry, Finn, that I don't fucking trust. Turkey has got the best surgeons in no. the world. No, it has. It's cheap. It's cheap because of the taxes. No. Yeah. No. I want to go, I'm going to spend some Patreon money, go down London, I'm going to get myself a new dick, a new fucking hairline. I can't wait to get your hair transplant, you know, because you are going to do it, aren't you? If Laura leaves. Well, if she stays. If Laura's, then she's just going to have to put up with it. All right, okay. She's just handed a notice in. She's doing fine. Does Laura like your ball? She cannot have a job anymore and look at my shiny bald ass. Head. Hair transplant in your ass. Got a quiff on me bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> if ever I go for any, if I'm ever fixing it up, got a new watch, maybe I'm getting a new fucking nose. I don't know. But it's in London with people who I think know what they're doing. Ironically, they can be Turkish. <laughs> but I'm just not going to like, welcome to Fakram Airport. I'll just get you in the taxi and we'll take you to the hospital. No. What do you think about it. those people who get like, um, Surgery to look like their favorite celebrity. Have you seen like that fat fella who wants to look like David Beckham, and he actually ended up looking like David Bentley, which was quite funny. <laughs> who ironically wanted to be David Beckham? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If you were going to get surgery to look like any celebrity, I'd like would, American Denzel Washington, I would go and Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington. I'd do wordplay. That's what I'd do. I'd, so I'd base my cosmetic surgery and ethnicity change on some wordplay. I call myself Denzel Nightingale. <laughs> I'd go, I'd go reverse Wacko Jacko this, and have kids touch me. What? This David Beckham kid? Yeah. He's got a new thing and he's trying to look like Brooklyn now. Turn it on. Turn the telly oh, on. Oh, it's so it's there. fucking... Is it remote? It's so, so creepy. So now he's, he's got sugar daddies now that are funding his new dream to look like Brooklyn Beckham. Oh, no, bro. He does look like David Beckham, to be fair to him. <laughs> Like, to be fair. Hey, he looks like David Beckham fucked an umpa lumpa. <laughs> he looks like... Are it. we putting him in? Yeah, he's in. Yeah, of course we are. Oh, my God. To be fair to him, if if I walk past him in the streets, I'd be like... <laughs> is that David Beckham? Is that David Beckham? <laughs> he's got any tattoos of daft cunts or a beard or no, the I... hair or face of David Beckham or head or body. No, but if you squint... If you close your eyes and imagine David Beckham. <laughs> he looks like, he looks David, like David Beckham. <laughs> he looks ill, mentally. He looks like David Beckham. If David Beck if you, you know, if David Beckham turned up looking like they'd be like, David Beckham's recovering from some serious illness. Oh, is this the Korean fella? A Brazilian man who wants well, to... Well, people are trying to make themselves look Korean now, aren't they? That's the new. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's, there's the whole K-pop phenomenon. So, yeah, you look sort of Asian... Just as bad. I think you could. I think you could transition <laughs> into thought, Korean easiest. <laughs> bro, come on, bro. <laughs> did, you, did anyone else just as It's good. I don't do the eye stuff. I, no. don't, I don't even see. That's really it. offensive to me, but it's also very racist, isn't it? And I'm just wondering whether do I get away with it? Like, is that like me being able to do like <laughs> yeah, yeah, Asian yeah. eye jokes? Is that like like black people being able to use the N word with each other? I do. Can I use the I word? I think it's uh, which comedian that we know that we're talking about the, the some people would go no it's not all right i think it's your eye you know yeah. like it's their word yeah no? it's my eye yeah yeah k-pop oh my god imagine Kareen, Kareen, is <gasps> next, they, is it next thinking, year's Christmas number one because we're going to have to defend our title obviously we're going to win Christmas number one this year if you haven't already ordered pre pre ordered Lord has gone why are you even watching this podcast and the acoustic Fuck version off. and the dance version <laughs> why do you hate kids with eye cancer <laughs> you pube do you want other kids to end up looking Korean no go and order the song there's six versions well three versions that you can all you can pre order twice. You, you know, you know, you were saying. I think you found the line. Oh, boy. oh my Going god! Going up. There's a, a, a acoustic and a dance version. If you pre-order all six, three, all all three on Amazon and then on Apple, that is six sales for us. It'll cost you less than six quid, less than a fiver actually. Yep. And it's all going to kids with fucking dodgy eyes and other ones that are dying of other stuff. They're getting loads of dough, and we get Christmas number one anyway. I think next year's follow-up to defend our title should be a K-pop song. Yeah, 
I do. Can we come back to it? I really think we need to work on Adam explaining what charities we're doing this for. Listen, right, we're doing it for kids with spazzy eyes or something. Kids and like fucking kids called Zoe, <laughs> who are like knobheads. So it's a good cause because there's loads of little Zoes that are like fucking dicks. Fact. 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 K-pop. I don't even know what K-pop is. All I know is, you know the film Sing? But the animated Sing? There's like the bunny... Is it the little... Ch- there's little corgis that go... Gimme, gimme, gimme. That's not gay pop, is it? Is it gay pop? <laughs> gay pop? I said it wrong. In the best way gay possible. Pop? Gay pop? Gay pop? <laughs> yeah. It is... It is gay pop, though, isn't it? Mm. Gay pop? Gay pop? <laughs> that was in your head, Defo. You... But it is gay. K-pop is a bit gay, though, isn't it? Gay don't pop. Know. You can't come out of this. Oh, I just there's, no, there's, no, there's no rules out of this. I you just, said gay pop gay out loud. Pop. <laughs> get on me. <laughs> hey, gay pop, get on me. Oh, the people you don't want to piss off on the internet are K-pop fans. Trust me. Oh, Why? Let's start some K-pop. Are you K-pop? messing? They are fucking animals. Are we, they? Yes, they will destroy all your social medias. Why? Because it's just, it's weird. I don't know what it is. But we we don't understand what it is. I know BTS. BTS are great. I like Blackpink as well, but they're J-pop, aren't they? Right, okay. So they all bought tickets or signed up for the tickets for a Trump rally, didn't they? Because yeah. Trump had a go at K-pop in some way. And yeah, they- so they bought all the tickets for the Trump rally and there was like 40 people in an arena. Very. It's, it's all manufactured... Very successful, like it, it's like a it's like a machine. Like you do what you like told, and you learn the dance. Like they're not they're not very well paid. Well, they are, but like it's it's more of like a machine rather than yeah, just pop bands, isn't it? Yeah, but, but with that sort. But they of go to a school and they're picked. They go to K-pop school. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. And you're picked to make the, the the perfect. Like there's a vin- the ginger one, there's a smart one, there's a funny one, and then which has been going on in pop for ages, hasn't it? Yeah, like Spice they're just, Girls, they're just a lot more honest about it. Yeah. Over here, we try and hide that, don't we? Yeah. But like over there, they're just like, listen, lads. <laughs> <laughs> the pause was just tuning the voice in. Hello, I'm the headmaster of the K-pop school. Uh, sorry, this voice is offensive. All right, lads. <laughs> I am headmaster K-pop. 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 I'm not even messing. If K-pop fans find that, we're fucked. What? Because they're animals on the internet. They're not going to find it, though, are they? No. I'll tell you right now, any K-pop fans watching this, don't do it. Suck my dick. <laughs> gimme, 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 lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> I've never Absolutely seen him look this scared. Fucked it. Have you? Lick you my said bum hole bef- after a poo. Carl, um, before you said the blacks, <laughs> and now you're scared of K-pop. Yeah. Lick my bum hole after a poo. Clean my asshole with your K-pop. Go team. on, take K-pop down. Because <laughs> you're so brave, Adam. You just don't play by anyone's rules. Take K-pop down. K-pop? What? What's that stand for? Crap pop. Oh. It's about C-R-A-P. I love this job. <laughs> C-pop. Oh. Crack a yeah. pop. Crack. Crack. Sounds like a drink. Is it white pop? <laughs> oh, I love that white pop. Honky pop. Honky pop. <laughs> Honky Pop. If Monk there was a brand, Honky Pop. If there was a brand of, of fizzy drinks called Honky Pop, <laughs> try the new have a word Honky Pop. Are you feeling all right today, baby? You've hardly touched your blueberry Honky Pop. <laughs> oh, I get really bad gas from Honky Pop. <laughs> honky Pop. Oh, white cola Honky Pop. <laughs> Honky pops for racists for racists that won't drink coke. I don't like the colour boy. I drink man mm, clear honky, honky pop. Honky pops gin. What? Honky pops gin. Like what white women? Yeah, alcohol. Yeah, honky pop. No, that's mummy special water. That sounded gay pop, didn't it? <laughs> that sounded- genuinely gave me like a Vietnam flashback. <laughs> Into Vietnam. <laughs> Felt like it growing up. That's mummy special water. Did she ever call it that? Yeah. No. It's called the Honky Pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch my Honky Pop, you little fucking cunt. Adam! I'm thirsty! Get us a Honky Pop! And ice. I used to get me mum at ale sometimes, and I was only like 11. Hang on. She'd just send me the offie, and Peter who worked there just knew it was for me now, so he'd just give me it. Oh. 
And then sometimes I'd get like a little bit of extra for me. What did you get? But he knew that that was for me. I'd be like, can I have my mum's usual half of vodka? And she also wants four cans of car. I'm the Kim the I don't know. Have you tried our new blueberry honky pop? <laughs> Not for everyone, but you're all right. <laughs> Get on me. It's not for the old El Hadjis. You know what I mean? <laughs> the old Jufies. Too far. So you just go You just go to the off and go, get a bottle of vodka, you know what it's for, and you pay. Yeah. The usual. It was I different pe- back then. I Peter. Pre-9-11, a lot of things were different. Yeah. Bag and booze was never the same. Still, the bee flying thing is the most <laughs> annoying, but this, this has to be, you've given me thread. I've got to pick at it. 9-11 changed a lot of off-license rules and Dovecot did it. It did? It really did. Security went off worldwide, didn't oh, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Once the Pentagon had been attacked, it was a fucking nightmare <laughs> buying a half of a half a liter of vodka in Dovecot at Peter's. Lad, I know I know you and I know your mum, but I don't know, you could be telling... It tell wasn't her. called Peter's, it was called Kelly's Wines. Peter's just worked at this one. Nice one, good. <laughs> Not bad. Just doing my Taliban thing. <laughs> The world did change after 9 11, though, and the office could have been a part of that. They were? Security was upped. Yeah. Well Meal done. deals went from 250 to 3 quid. Fact. Check it. <laughs> Check it. Yeah. Yeah. Fact. The old Taliban BLT. <laughs> Taliban BLT. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Worry, worry, worry. What are you, what are you? Bombs, lightsabers, and tanks. You got one more question for this section? I think we'll uh, go one more. I'm going to leave this to dumb luck. <laughs> I've got four. I've ordered them. One, two, three, and four. Yeah. And I would like Steve to shout out a number. Five, three. Oh, he <laughs> said five. He wasn't Yay! one of the numbers. He wasn't even messing them. <laughs> you were, weren't you? He said three second. Three. Three, three is advice. Oh. oh. I think it's advice. Me and our lass have been together for over a year now, and we're hitting a block in the sex life. She's told me she's never come, nor knows what she likes. Like, can I just stop this? The fact that in an email where you're, I would guess, Tom, you're from somewhere in the north. Me and our lass have been together for over a year now. Never come, nor knows what she likes, nor... Am I in? I'm in. The, am I in the wrong? Sorry, I'm going to do this probably. Am I in the wrong for trying to get us to try stuff to find out what she likes? I've tried the conversations to get it started, but it all do, all it does is turn into an argument with her going mad, saying, "Why is it all about sex?" Don't know about yous, <laughs> yous lot, these scouts, but I get more into it by knowing she's come or coming. It's spinning riddles in me head <laughs> on what to no, do. No, like you do. <laughs> And I know you love a riddle. So please help me sort the riddle out. Love the pod, <laughs> Tom. Tom, yeah, I don't know why She's you, a twat. I don't know why you... Well, why is it always that, Adam? No, she is, though. Why is it always... He's trying. She, he's trying. trying. He's asking, what do you want from this relationship sexually? And she's like, well, is it going to be all about sex? Why can't we talk <laughs> about bolognese or something? I think... I just, she doesn't sound too into it, does she? I don't think it's like you're going to unlock the cupboard and she's actually an absolute... Freak, I just don't think she's that into it. No, but she she might be into it. She's just not willing to try. She might love getting covered in custard and fingered while it's on her. She doesn't know, so she tries. Have you tried that? What? Have you tried that? Yeah, that's how he knows he likes it. Right. Yeah. She needs to try stuff, but she needs to have a think. Maybe she needs to watch like different categories on Pornhub and see what makes her pop. What makes a honky pop? <laughs> what makes a honky pop? Oh, that'd be a good, good euphemism. Fuck me, lad. You make my honky pop. <laughs> she doesn't want sex, mate. This no, is a, I think this she's is getting, an issue, isn't I it? think she's getting bummed elsewhere. Uh, mate, there's some, there are some absolute textbook responses on this podcast. That is fu- That is absolutely nailed on one of them. Uh, there's something wrong with me. Mrs. She's getting fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Probably by a K-pop fan. <laughs> From before. <laughs> I, I genuinely I think, think she wants you to watch the NFL, mate, or your version of it. Now, a year in, this is bollocks, because I'm assuming they're quite young as well. She needs to be more open to this conversation. And if you're right and she's just not into sex, 
she's not into sex because she isn't coming. That's why she's not into sex. Is she very There's nothing better than coming apart from lamb roasting, as, as we discussed before. <laughs> yeah, just make her a, a lamb roast and then try and make her come while she's not with she, the leg of lamb. She's faced in and she's like, "Bloody hell, get him one now." The problem is she sounds very, very shy and she doesn't want to talk about it. So, ha- what's your advice? You're right. She needs to try stuff because every, would, you everyone's like, got a button. Everyone's got some sort yeah, of button. You so would how, like sex if you'd never come. I know. So what I'm saying is, I agree. So what I'm saying is, how does he start this conversation? Because he's gone. Can we talk about what you like? And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. She's obviously pretty freaked out about sex. So how does he get the conversation rolling? So he needs to do something that is entirely sexually for her. Because se- sex without coming is shit. It's just like doing a load of fucking press-ups or planks, isn't it? Like there's not, like I've always thought it. I grew up, yeah. That's do my... you not enjoy sex? Yeah. What about edging? But it, you you enjoy it because you know you're gonna come. No, no. But sex can be it's enjoyable too. Yeah, but it's a nice feeling. <laughs> it it's not worth it. <laughs> no, what I, I, what we've learned. I like from the Ted smell Adam. of a roast dinner. What but we, if I don't get to eat? I don't go and sit in the carvery and just have a whiff. Adam it doesn't think about sex. He thinks about coming. <laughs> they are not <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> smell my carvery. <laughs> can't touch it though. <laughs> Yeah, you, in it, in you his, keep saying coming. There's other stuff around sex. It's not just jizzing, is it? Is it? <laughs> Coming's the best bit. Uh, yeah, but it's not just about... It's not the only bit, though. No, but I would... You keep I don't... say coming, like, like sex is... Fuck, it, sex is a right... Ch- like, it's not like you have to get through the the chore of sex to get to the coming. It all feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. And sometimes, not coming for a while, the longer you can live, that feels better as well. Yeah, but then the cum's even better. Yes, but it's exactly. not the only thing. Like, what's your top three things? Coming, coming on a warm day, coming on a cold day, <laughs> coming outside and coming in my belly button. I love like, watching fussy. If the season never ended, I wouldn't watch it. I want to see who wins the Champions League. That's the bit that I'm open yeah, to get to. Yeah, but I enjoy the fussy because the final's coming. If it was just pointless fussy, I wouldn't watch it. No, I don't watch international friendlies. They're having international friendlies every week. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, but, but she's mulled over, Dan. But footy, <laughs> but footy isn't just the Champions League final. There's a build up to it. It's all good. You're right. The final and the build. But if the final wasn't there, the build up would be shit. Right. No, I'm just talking about how much you are talking about coming, like it's the be all and end all. Because it's the final. Have you ever had sex without coming? I mean, I mean, like you didn't come because you were whatever drunk, whatever. I mean, like you've just not come. No. Right. Try it. That's why they call him the finisher. Ricky Undertaker. the finisher. Menage. <laughs> Ricky. With wings. Ricky the Ricky the Menage finisher. Because I finish minges. Stunning work. Unusable. Playing the Philharmonic in Liverpool. One of the bigger venues in the Merseyside. One man show. Oh, it's unbelievable to me as well sometimes. He does need to do something though that she doesn't How are you broaching this conversation? You, she obviously doesn't even want to have the chat. Tie it up. We're all... Tie her up. There you go. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, she might like that. Just try it. Ha- <laughs> Whoa! You got, you got got it. Hey. <laughs> oh, Carl! What, what, what are you doing, Tom? You'll fucking like it. Carl! I can see the reasoning. I mean, but, in a safe environment where uh, you know yeah. she's she's consul- uh, no. consenting. You know, she doesn't know she likes being tied up and sexually attacked <laughs> until it's... <laughs> you know? In a safe environment. I'm, like, I'm shove it a- in the panic room. Yeah. Do it in there. She'll feel nice and safe. Wacky warehouse. Quite safe. Padded. Mm. Quite dangerous. I think you should have it like an intervention. Get a family round. Yeah. <laughs> and just get a mum to be like, little piece of paper, like all nervous, like doesn't really want to say it. Like, Becky, <laughs> you're a right frigid bitch. <laughs> and coming's good, but it's not the only bit. And we love you. And we want you to enjoy sex. And you might love getting custard poured on you and fingered. <laughs> Get on me. And then her dad's like, look, girl, no father wants to think about his daughter getting fucked. But if it's all in vain, it makes it so much worse. You need to learn to come. Otherwise, my pain is pointless. I don't want to think about you getting absolutely polaxed if you're not at least getting to spaff at the end of it. It's not fair on me. It's not fair on you. And it's not fair on Tom. <laughs> it's not fair on me. Right. And now you're unfair. And now your little sister. I'm only eight and I shouldn't be here. I should be at school. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go, Tom. Problem solved. <laughs> and have a tied off the whole time. <laughs> no, Carl. Stop tying women up. Listen, hey. your mum's on her way. <laughs> Don't worry. No, tie it up like a Tom and Jet. Put it on, on a train track. Make sure she's safe, though. <laughs> a real train track or like one that. A, a like fake a scale one. electrics. A fake one. <laughs> There you go, Tom. There's your device. Become Dick Dastardly. Have a family intervention about sex on a Skeletrix. Mm. <laughs> your brother's next. Fuck off. Mm. Lab record. <coughs> That's it, innit? Yeah. Tom, break. you're welcome. Get on me. <laughs> it's not fair. It's just, just fine. Tie her up. <laughs> Tie her up and just fuck her. <laughs> Don't see she a, might like it. Don't see a problem with that. I'm not a rapist. I'm inquisitive. <laughs> it's important. All right, lids. We need to tell you about our sponsor, NordVPN. But if I'm being completely honest and sounding like a granddad, I don't know loads about VPNs. I do though. VPNs are an absolute belter, and the fact you watch as much porn as you do and have never used one of these is absolutely fucking mind-blowing. It is essentially premium cyber security. It hides everything you're doing. And with one click of a mouse, you can decide you're in any country in the world. So, you know, like Netflix is in, in America is a lot bigger than in the UK. Right. You can go, I'm in New York, lad, and it'll give you American Netflix. If you want to watch a Premier League game at three o'clock in the afternoon that isn't available in the UK, you can go, do you know what? I'm in Saudi Arabia, lad, and I'm watching a bit of fucking Liverpool against Tottenham Hotspur. Can I be in Burundi on a Monday? You can be in Burundi on a Monday. Can I be in Dubai on a Friday? You have Dubai on a Friday. Oh, you can my be, God. There's 59 different countries on uh, NordVPN. I think for me, because I've, I've used this company for a couple of years, so it's a big benefit that they're now sponsoring us and I can sell them. They're the best VPN company in the world. The cybersecurity is next level. And we've now got a promo code that gets you 73% off up to that and a bonus gift if you sign up using our code. <laughs> That's a lot. Go to nordvpn.com slash have a word and use the custom code have a word. And on top of that, 30 day money back guarantee. So if you get it and you think it's shite, they'll give you your dough back risk free. Absolute belter and an honour to have them on board as a sponsor, Megan. I've had an idea for a film. Go. You know, big foot. Yeah. Big finger. And it's Finn. Finn. That's Finn. it. It's the whole film. No, is that because he's Does, done any acting or because no, he's, he's just in like the woods in Wales and people are like, have you heard about Big Finger? And he comes out. But for the film, we make his finger bigger. Right. <laughs> what you actually? Because he's got a big finger anyway. That's why he got the part. But you yeah. want to get a. Yeah. And couldn't you just get any actor and make the finger bigger? Yeah, but then that's not true to form. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's Scott Bennett, yeah. Hey, Scott Bennett! <laughs> oh, Hello. I nearly pressed the wrong button then. I nearly, as we were, Scott Bennett's here, gave mama you, like Mama like that, Mama, mama like, like that. that. She's enjoying the big finger chat. Uh, Finn's got a big finger. He uses it for pleasure in women and got, some small animals. <laughs> he doesn't. He does it. He uses it for twatting the typewriter. Well... Typewriter. Fucking hell, Grandad Dan. <laughs> you know what you're thinking the, of? The, the electronic typewriter. <laughs> Angela Lansbury in the yeah, yeah, yeah. she wrote. <laughs> Angela <laughs> Dansbury. <laughs> Angela Dansbury. Some of this wordplay is starting to do my fucking tits in. Um, How are you, Scott? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Recent live at the Apollo Star. Of course. Well, yeah, yeah. Night late. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, Scott was on, is it episode three of this year's series? Uh, yeah, uh, no, yes, yes, three. three. Episode three, and you yeah. were supposed to go out on a, on a Wednesday night, as all other episodes too, but then Stockport against Bolton Wanderers <laughs> went to extra time <laughs> in the FA Cup. A Lancashire team, couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Trample on my dreams. <laughs> Best thing was, my dad rang afterwards and went, you were brilliant. <laughs> winding me up honestly I didn't tell anyone though that it hadn't gone out so I texted people to test them and said did you see it and That's a lot a of people move, went yeah you were brilliant Ah, you did you yeah, did it I did a couple of my mates yeah oh, right. went, that's what so was funny good. start was good yeah that penalty you took at the end <laughs> yeah, yeah. got a lot of fucking yeah. brilliant got a lot of pace on the wing yeah. for that's... a 42 year old dad you know, <laughs> but yeah, it was but you, how long have you been doing stand up? 
10 years. And the goal for any stand-up in Amazing. the UK is to do live at the Apollo yeah. at some point, isn't it? Yeah. And imagine. you finally got it. Yeah, all that sacrifice, driving up and down the motorway, pushing my marriage to the limit. <laughs> Get all the kids sat round on beanbags, all the snacks out. This is daddy's big moment. Uh-huh. Didn't happen. <laughs> it's what, amazing. What Keeps round you... of the FA Cup as well? Like second? Know. Second round, I think yeah. it was. Do you know what it's Not like? Even... Do you know when... One of the big ones. Do you know, do you know in Friends when Joey brings his grandma around to show, oh, yeah, <laughs> to he show him his, 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 he's in the show and they've cut his scene. He's got all his kids lying around. It's like, yeah, so daddy plays centre back now. <laughs> That's him. No, 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 don't, no, don't zoom in. <laughs> they're, really, they're really confused. The yeah, we don't do stand innovations. We do pitch invasions now. It's a new thing. Yeah. New thing. Yeah. It's COVID, isn't it? We do outdoor gigs. Oh. How was it? It was a re- weird for me because you're two of my best mates in comedy. Yeah. And you, you were the Wednesday. In really? comedy always stings at the end of that sentence, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You've right, a particular that. feel. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, if you're in a crisis, I'd never reach. I'd scroll past your numbers. <laughs> All right, let me put it another way. I really like both of you, but, but one was a nighttime invite to my wedding and one didn't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you call we me would... one of your best mates in work? Because that'd be that'd be. Scathing. Oh, it's a oh, Jesus! I, listen, I feel like I'm being pinned down for. If like, you got married now, relationship status. Would I would I be a groomsman? At, ho- honestly, hundred percent. Cool. You are not allowed to do a speech at any of my future weddings. <laughs> Why? Adam's doing the best man speech. <laughs> Why not? Your bees oh. can't fly. <laughs> you should be trying to sell merch after it. I'm not having it. I wouldn't sell merch. I'd just express a few of my ideas, <laughs> which is probably worse. <laughs> you are two of my mates. <laughs> right. Is that past the test, everyone? I think we'd and, be on a peripheral table and you fire escape. Yeah, listen, you were there. <laughs> But it was in Nottingham. You could not not turn up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It did make it very easy for me. It was a 12-minute drive from your house. Yeah, I yeah. can't make it, Dan. It's even, a nightmare. Even then, I think we came for last orders. The Brian, <laughs> yeah. the Brian Clough way was murder. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, the you were Tuesday night. You recorded it on Tuesday yeah. night, and then he recorded it on Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a, a weirdly nice feeling to be like, two of my best mates are like levelling up. I think I was in a car park of a TK Maxx as I considered it. Like, good, good for them. Good for them. <laughs> yeah. Good for them. Nice to get. I'll go and get a Ben Sherman jumper. Um, how was the day? Did you take your missus down? Je- took- Are we allowed to say? You said Gemma. Gemma right? yeah, 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 yeah. I took, I took Gemma down and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just did that thing with. You know, because Barry's like. <clears throat> Barry is Barry's another of our really close yeah, yeah. mates. And Barry's like, never say that I've ever had a friend or family ever. <laughs> <laughs> never even consider that I've known or been related to humans. <laughs> Like he's faking his own death. Yeah, yeah. Didn't you go to Didn't you go to school, Barry? Can you cut that out? Ah, because people will get the fucking school book out. It'd be the worst who do you think you are, would Barry? Would not it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like, make him clever. Just up. nothing on the family tree. Just Barry, Dad. Don't even mention him. Get rid of him. He just appeared. Barry Dodds was born to unknown parents yeah. at an unknown time in an unknown hospital in an unknown yeah. town. Yeah, and that's how he likes it. <laughs> But um, you did the shoot, so you took Gemma down. Yeah, yeah, I did. She because I think like it's quite nice in it. Like a treat is like a a moment when like all these years you've sort of been working on something, and then you go, something's happened, and then share it with her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you then- can't be like to be honest, love. I'm taking Dan. Do you want to do? Ch- <laughs> yeah, he's just going to be at TK Maxx I mean, otherwise. So. You, you are a relationship mate, Gemma. I'm sorry, <laughs> so you're in a particular category. But it was dead good, and she. You're one of my best women in this manage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Top three. Well, she she enjoyed it. I think it's. I think you can enjoy it when you're not doing it. So she sort of like went to the bar, sort of had like a proper night. It was like watching someone on a spa day that you've paid for that you can't enjoy. Right. Because I, like, oh I was shitting God. myself. The train, see. a theatre. Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was wonderful. Did, I would have loved to see if, did you get nervous? Because you, I've seen you get wound up by doing like a fucking, just a standard 20 minutes in. Like theatre cleared, you were like, damn, I've got to... <laughs> What's this gig like? I'm like, there's fucking 12 people here, I mate. Know. We're in mould. <laughs> I know. Well, the thing is as well, like, uh, you try and keep a lid on it, but then, like, as soon as, you probably found it, as soon as that fucking sign goes up and you come out through the smoke, you just go, oh, shit. Do you know what I mean? It's impossible not to get sucked into the occasion. Oh, yeah, but you I, did say about that. When the thing, does it lift? It yeah. It lifts. It's like... It's a bit garage door. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the, You're unveiled like a fucking... A, a child that's been trafficked, <laughs> just in some cunt's garage, in fucking yeah, 
town. I don't think that's how traffic children are revealed. <laughs> hey, we've got some human traffic in done, and here she is from Hungary. Come out. No, but like if the if the police were looking for you, and they were like, I think she's in that garage, and they were like, Hey, mate, open that garage, and he went, <laughs> and he went, ee, then that's how they would be revealed. <laughs> Come out to the sound of Iggy Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic children are smoke. kept in garages. Yeah. It's a well-known fact. But they don't have smoke when they come out. Thanks oh. very much. It's my dream to get out of this garage. If I was a kid and I'd been trafficked, I'd have a ciggy. Yeah, good point. What I said was stupid. <laughs> Adam wins again on Adam Hill, and he will die on that hill, as <laughs> we know. Was that your song? Were you Iggy Pop? No, I was Doves Pounding. <laughs> Why did you pick that? Oh, I picked a load, but they couldn't get a load yeah, from same compliance. With, same with Adam. Yeah, so I, I picked a few, and then in the end, I ended up it with the one that I should have picked from the start, which is Jamie Webster's This Place, which is a song about Liverpool by a scouser. What were your other options, NWA? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hit them up. <laughs> Hit them up by two back. What, like so an Egyptian? Fuck your bitch, you fat motherfucker, <laughs> West Side. Oh, Make it. money. Oh, I wanted it? that, but they said, oh, uh, Chris McCausland's got that. So... <laughs> <laughs> I want to place your hands by reef. They said no. Right. I wanted the Teletubbies theme tune. They said we can't get that cleared. <laughs> can't, can't get it cleared. No. On the BBC. I asked them, could I sing? And they said no. <laughs> Start spreading the news. <laughs> I'm singing my own intro. <laughs> what did? What were your other options? Well, the other options was I was gonna go Kasabian, but then there was all that. Shit in the news about him. So, I, so I went Michael Jackson so instead. <laughs> <laughs> Thriller! I went, I went, is, there, is there a Kasabian nonce? No, no, no. He not his wife just, five years ago. A, you know, knocking his missus about once. It, so it's just, I thought I'm going to step back from that. He's one. not in Kasabian anymore, is he? He's not in Kasabian anymore. It's Kasabian, he, well, Tom. You know, so that, but then there was others. So you picked Pounding instead. Interesting <laughs> choice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I, I, think, I think I was going to go. I was going to go Ebenezer Good, right? By the shame. <laughs> That was that, but then I had a moment where that was like, "That's ridiculous." That Wait, is just that'd be the intro that I picked, and everyone'd be like, "Yeah, that's done." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I, it doesn't make any sense to, for me. From I mean, the only thing is, I remember it first time round, but I was about thirteen. Do you know, so it didn't, it didn't make any sense. But yeah, you just thought it was about a, a nice bloke called Ebenezer. <laughs> it was very good. He's a good. He's yeah, a good. Yeah, yeah. He's Ebenezer. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I love that for my life. Amazingly smuggled that through. So there's a few choices really, but I think I did get my first choice. But I did remember, like, I had, I was quite hot. Before I went on, I don't know if you know, they give they put like a thing around my neck with two little fans on, like a personalised cooling system. What? And like I was walking around with these fans going, and I looked in the mirror, and I had like a makeup lady dabbing me, and I thought, you fucking. So they changed. never had the fans for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I me? Mean? Get me my fans. Do they you know never mean? had the fans for me. They got me one of the traffic children and hung them, and they just blew on me. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I miss my family. So you, you had the platinum package, didn't you? <laughs> Adam, you have gold? can I ask you a question? Even though I'm from Hungary, I think NWA was a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's questionable. <laughs> I uh, I didn't really take in the, the pre thing because no. I was watching Liverpool play AC Milan. You're very good like that. You can just sit and do that and then go and do a gig. Yeah, because in my head, I was like, if I ever get to do like panel shows and stuff, which... You know, there's a couple I'd like to do, and there's a couple I'm not really that asked about. Yeah. I think with them, I'd be a lot more, oh, I need to get this right. And, but, like, I was just, this is a bit arrogant, but I was like, it's just another gig. It's a big one. Yeah. But it, I've just got to approach it. Like, and if Liverpool were playing AC Milan and I was doing hot water, I'd be sat backstage watching Liverpool play AC Milan. So I was like, I'm watching a match. Yeah. I, re I, I think we mentioned this on a Patreon episode. I really made Brett Vincent laugh by, who's another agent, by, I wasn't trying to, but Liverpool, you know the clock they have at the side of the stage to let yeah. you know how long the act on has done. So uh, Esther Manito was opening the show and it come up, uh, we got to 19 minutes and it come up with I think five or six minutes at a time and I just looked to the side to see how long Esther had left and Brett Vincent just burst out laughing. He's like, what the fuck was that? I went, seeing how long the match has got left and see whether I'm going to get to the end. He was like, you're doing live at the Apollo, and all you care about is whether you're going to get to see Liverpool see out this 3-2 win against AC Milan in a group stage game. I'd have loved it if you'd have walked on with your phone, just, just the still score. watching it. Well, I got a heckle. I was on stage, and I mentioned footy for some reason, and someone went, we won, by the way, lad, 3-2. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> 
Well, I, I think you have got to keep your mindset of what you would do at a normal gig, aren't you? And mine it's is just panic. Gig. <laughs> <laughs> Any gig. Panic in Skywalker. That's what I do. Just sit back there freaking out. And then I thought, well, this is normal. This is how I do it. It should, but, yeah, it, yeah. It'd be weirder if all of a sudden you were calm and collected and yeah. whatever gets you there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. As we've said on this, like uh, you'll remember Andy Watson just about. But Andy, wants, Andy, Andy Watson did vocal warm-ups. And that's the only time I've ever been like, your pre-gig rituals need to stop near me because it like, nee, 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 like a little ginger Lancastrian going <laughs> me me do re me do re me la 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 you're like fuck off you're doing an open spot 10 minute Thursday at the Frog <laughs> fuck off just shouting and doing lunges near the fire exit he, he everyone did. else's process just do you that's he fine. was looking you know the, when Hot Wars used to be at the Crown Pub yeah and at the top of the stairs there was a mirror and the audience could see him but he was in the mirror like doing his act outs and stuff in the mirror, like getting ready, like looking at himself in the mirror, pulling like a fake gun out and stuff. And the whole audience, were, like Paul was on comparing. Like, the, no one was looking at Paul Smith. They were all like, who the fuck is this mental cunt over here? And then <laughs> Paul went, Andy Watson. And he walked through a door that didn't need to be there to come out from behind the curtain that obviously didn't need to be there either. And they were like, oh, it's him. <laughs> and the whole crowd like, I can't wait for him to do his gun bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shut ya! <laughs> do re mi fa sol la ti do. Uh, yeah, I just that, that pre. I don't ever want to turn into one of those comics though that just looks like they're about to fall asleep in the dressing room, can't be arsed, doesn't want to be there, and just lumbers onto the stage. Like I'm quite yeah. relaxed, but I I never want to lose. I don't want to be like oh shit. But I I'd, I'd that little bit of spark just before you go on the little bit of fun and excitement because we've said this loads. The green room is a fucking great little place when there's yeah. some good eggs in it. Well, I touched on this before and you said you actually wanted to come back to it. I've got an idea for me tour next year, which I've sort of stolen from Dave Chappelle. So, something I've struggled with. You've toured a little bit, haven't you? You've, yeah. You're in the middle of it now? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you have an opening act or do you do it on your own? Yeah, I have an opening act, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, on my last tour, because the tour was quite small and the venues were quite small, couldn't really afford one without, like some of the venues being like, it was pointless me going, like making like less than I would on a club gig. I still turned up though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the solitude backstage, just being on your own in a dead silent room, waiting to be told, oh, you can go on. I think that's so counterproductive to being good on stage, especially with me. I like being sort of happy to be there and whatever. And you sort of have to go from literal silence and scrolling backstage to, hey! So I'm going to get some... Um, like lights and stuff just to make the green room look a bit fun and I've like a I'm taking a speaker with me a bit of music on getting me all pumped up in the green room what lights what <laughs> strobe lights right strobe lights so right. you're having an after party before the gig <laughs> I'm having a before party yeah <laughs> nice yeah <laughs> big bag five of five minutes to go bom, 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 bom. <laughs> yeah, yeah but okay. I think I'll go on in a much better do you know I've never thought about like in that dressing room where everyone's shooting the shit and everyone's on good fo like as we all know, a bell end in the dressing room can ruin it completely. Yeah. Or two people that don't like each other, as much as it's like weirdly... Oh, that, that's, that, the, it's, that's like a kid who's <sighs> in a parents who are in the middle of a messy divorce. Yeah. And he's sort of sat there on the weekend <laughs> going, can we go now, Dad? You promised we'd go. <laughs> Dad. And he's just going, and you never, you've cut me out of his life. <laughs> like that. I just want to do a tight 20. Yeah, yeah that is awful. Sat there, but just... when the dressing room is bouncing, it's yeah. sometimes as fun as the gig. Yeah, yeah, and I need it to so be like that backstage. That. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So, I, I, so yeah. that's another thing for you. You're going to be in charge of the playlist. Well, you're going to be on his tour, aren't you? I'm tour manager. My mate Rummy's coming on every day of my tour. I've got Vittorio, Ishan, I've got Jamie Hutchinson doing a few. Maybe you should have two support acts, and it just gets too busy, doesn't it? This is Maybe you should pay someone to be the, I think, the dressing room guy. Do you know if I get to that 2,000-seater venue level, I think I will have two support acts. All right, well, give us a shot. Chappelle did. Um, yeah. Who would you book? <laughs> If you were you're on tour, you've decided you go for the rowy dressing room. <laughs> there's going to be lights, parties. There's going to be a spread, hummus, dips, yeah. leg of lamb, <laughs> cocaine, <laughs> never to be combined. Big line of kids. <laughs> Sit down for a rock coke, and then have oh, lovely. Rose me in time. Get on me. Uh, who would the who's the act you would most like in there with you? Not going on. You don't have to watch them do stand up. Who's the guy in the dressing room that's going to get you in the mood without them ever being on the stage? Who's the, the booking where you're like, mate, sounds weird. Can I give you 100 quid to come and hang out in the dressing room? Robert and White. Robert White. <laughs> yeah. Robert White. The gay 
<laughs> on the spectrum musical comedian. Yeah, he can play some songs. Yeah. Robert White, who I've had an email before I've gigged with him asking to not talk to him before a gig. <laughs> That's your dressing room. That's your dressing room. I used to be the show Please manager. do not look Robert in the eye. <laughs> he's beyond Britain Got Talent. And he's got you know a new... I was doing there? I was trying to pick someone who I think it might not work with just for the sake of comedy. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Oh, let me just break that down. Clever. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I, I I think Thomas Green and Brennan Reese who are doing the majority of my tour support, I think both of them are going to be great for it. Good laugh backstage. I'm go, there, lad. Yeah. I'll go Fern Brady. And not many people know this, but... <laughs> Uh, Thomas Green can body pop so that's always fun to watch not many people know that not many people do know that the same amount of people know that as know that Michael Caine is a nosy neighbour not, <laughs> not a lot of people know that <laughs> yeah, they do since he was on TV who's your uh, who's your dressing room hype guy well I, I've been touring with Matt Bragg who's quite a new act but he's so cool it's he's sort sound of, as fuck it, as well and he's like super cool looks cool is a complete antithesis for me. It's like it's like I'm the I feel I consider myself as uncool. So for for me, it's like having the libertines open for uh, books fizz or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like I've got I've got that sort of like he, he sort of he sort of like they go, oh god, this guy's sort of sharp looking, cheekbones and all this. <laughs> then I go out just sort of you know just come from a spin class, bit sweaty, <laughs> relatable, relatable. Stop that makes me think I could tour. That's the so <laughs> he, he brings the edge in. Do you know what I mean? When they go, oh, he's with from this you guy, so he must be quite cool. No, from the wrestling. <laughs> bring the edge <laughs> bring the edge well a lot of them have hype guys though don't they I'd American. love a hype man would you like a hype guy I would really 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 love a hype man maybe that's where Steve's hours can be topped up from or Finn's when we get a new studio and we make them full time just have Finn before like even the opener goes on Finn just has to go on and go coming on here tonight we got Adam Rowe we gotta hype this motherfucker up he is he is he is slowly getting out of debt <laughs> he, Slowly, <laughs> you're fucking minted. He, he is now opening his mail. Sometimes <laughs> he he has got a cleaner who comes on a bi-weekly basis. By which I mean every two weeks, <laughs> not twice, twice a week. week. <laughs> <laughs> Fun before. Why would we uh, get Finn as a hype man when he's not even allowed a microphone on the podcast? He hasn't got a microphone doing this either. He's got a shout. Oh, that in an arena. Are you feeling uncool? Have you always felt uncool? Well, I, mean, I remember when I taught you I told you years ago that I did drugs and you handled it like I was telling my grandparents I'd suck dick for money. You were like <laughs> <laughs> You went I'll do really? that Oh well, well uh, you know Okay <laughs> yeah. Wow I didn't realize I mean it's you know very modern like, Do you not do drugs, Scott? I've not I've dabbled in the past but never not not now. Yeah. Would mean, you try heroin? There's no. <laughs> cool. Well, would you? No. No, no. I, I think I think that the actual follow-up <laughs> is, I think the reality of doing them now is then you've got, like, to build Duplo in the morning with a child. <laughs> and I think that's possibly the worst come down you'd ever have to go through. Oh, yeah. Is that, you know, you're up in the morning, you're taking him to dance, <laughs> still high as a kite, queuing up with a, a leotard sort of yeah. Yeah, but if you're taking stuff. them to dance if you're having a key that might be fucking sound right now bring them in yeah, straight us, in us, there us, yeah. us, when people us, judge 22 us, year olds us, and 23 year olds <laughs> for doing drugs like oh my god they're so they're off the rails you're like good yeah now's the time that is the window to do it when you're 46 it's probably not the best time yeah to get into mandy and go dancing yeah i mean i i did the reading and leeds festivals this year and i've never felt as old Sort of wandering about. I was like the dad with the car keys at a school disco. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this just is sort of, still in the background, just sort of go, oh, you know. <laughs> what did you play them or did you actually what, looking go for the swingers do? <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> I, I, I did the gig. Am I at the wrong party? <laughs> but I looked out and I just thought this is ridiculous. Like they're all in sort of neon and sort of scantily clad and stuff, and I'm wandering around in a burghouse. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Baker then. <laughs> no, no, no. I went Leeds Festival and me Baker. Thought it was the dumb thing. I'm sort of I'll tell you what, about, about Scott Bennett, you know, he's culturally insensitive, but he's never sunburnt. Oh. Give him that. <laughs> uh, but I was walking around sort of thinking, like, you know, when it sort of jars with the sort of situation. But yeah, but this is a cool job we do. That's the thing. I think that's the one thing I've got going. The one saving grace. Yeah, that this is a cool job. You guys want to go to Leeds though, don't you? Uh, I found you out this morning the Arctic Monkeys are playing, so I'm going. I don't care how I go. 
But I'm well, home. you're going to try and get Adam on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the way, isn't it? Carl yeah. told me this morning that I had to text my agent <laughs> and try and get book for Leeds Festival so that he could have the spare ticket. <laughs> the lineup's literally been announced today, on it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> the the hustle needs to yeah. begin now. Straight away, you yeah. got to start with a slow burn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. going. But you're 29, you lot. You'll be 30 then. You're still within the margin of error. We're over 40. What's the one? What's the festival that is in Lincolnshire? Is it Secret Garden or the Lost... Lost Village. The Lost, Lost Village. Village. Yeah. Oh, my God. You just... It's basically like you're wandering around and they're all so scantily clad and they're all 18, 19. There's no one over the 20, uh, 22 and it really looks like you've just... You, you work for St. John's Ambulance and you've forgotten your <laughs> uniform. There is an, a, an age with festivals where it becomes really bad for you to be there, but then I think it comes back around again. So I think maybe from like 38... To 70, you can't go. But if you're 70 at like Leeds Festival, everyone will be like, oh, look at this fucking half holiday. Fingering everyone. Yeah. Oh, like the second <laughs> the second wind. Like you're almost legendary because you've got. Yeah. You've got. Yeah. Ra- it's like. Those over 70s that are at a festival dancing, it's a very patronizing. Like, oh my God. Everyone's. No, because it's on social media. And you're like, look, <laughs> granddad's dancing. <laughs> That's fine if there's one of them and it's ironic. As soon as you've got a whole fucking busload of 80 year olds like, oh, look In a mosh out. pit. Yeah. <laughs> On my, on my count, go for it. One, two, three, fuck off, Maureen. Yeah, I um, I don't want to... I'll go maybe if I'm like the really old cunt, but I'm definitely not in the do festival you care, window. Do you care what they think about you? Is that what you care about? Uh, I'm quite sensitive to outside, like the atmosphere of a place. If I catch a few looks like, what the fuck? It would ruin my day. Like really? it, I, yeah, I don't like going... Yeah, I don't like drinking. Yeah, but then they instantly forget about you and you can still have a good time. You're not ruining their day. Why should they ruin yours? Honestly, a festival surrounded by 18, 19-year-olds does very, very little for me. Do you oh, ever you watch that enjoy- next Saturday Night Takeaway? What? It does... It makes sense. Go on. So, you know when they do, like, undercover Ant and Dech, where yeah. they, like, do the makeup and they make them look dead old? They could do that for you and make you look 17, and then you wouldn't feel self-conscious. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, so I'm a paedophile, but well hidden. <laughs> great. Why are you a paedophile? That's great. Because would is that not what a paedophile would do? Dress as a 17 year old and go to a festival. You think watching too much Scooby Doo, you? <laughs> <laughs> what paedophiles? Yes, you finally, <laughs> we've unmasked the festival pedo, <laughs> and I would have got away episode. with it if I didn't oh. fancy those kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's a rough episode of Scooby Doo. Loads of kids getting shagged. We need to find out right, who's it. doing this. You're right. It is a rough episode, isn't <laughs> yeah. it, Carl? Yeah. Got, look, they've got, got Scooby Doo after. after Dark. <laughs> Late night Scooby. <laughs> you know, they do like Hollyoaks at midnight because they oh, can't yeah. put it on at four in the afternoon. <laughs> Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo version. <laughs> PM, where he actually got away with it. <laughs> Loads of people died. We should have got him before he got away with it. Fuck. Grim. Mm. Scott's face like, is this what you do? <laughs> <laughs> My Scott. kids love Scooby-Doo as well. I feel like it's slightly tainted, that idea now. But they always sort of go on, like, they quite like the bit at the end where they reveal the mask and shit, you know, and yeah. they go like, you know, let's see who you really are. And I think that's a really bad message, isn't it? Because it is like, never trust anyone. Do you know what I mean? They can't build <laughs> relationships because like at some minute that mask's coming off. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't bond with the teacher. She's not who she says she is. That'd be a pretty intense Scooby-Doo though, wouldn't it? Like, who was it? Oh shit, it's the primary school teacher. Yeah. That's it's, who is killing everyone people. everyone you trust is who it is. <laughs> it's it's mum. <laughs> your parents out who they say you are. Yeah. Yeah. On Scooby-Doo, it's always the soundest one, isn't it? You can spot it within the first five minutes. Whoever's yeah. being the nicest, they're the one who's killing everyone. It's the person who They don't kill the people, do they? It's the person who owns the house. Doesn't want to sell it, or the estate agent. Yeah, pretending to be a monster and haunting someone. Yeah, yeah. You should know that instantly. Yeah, there's actually no crimes committed in Scooby Doo, is there? They just like Scooby-Doo. jump out of people. <laughs> hey! oh, I got to get to the bottom of this. Do you want to see proper crime on Scooby Doo? <laughs> Do yeah. A band sort of stockpiling bodies in a basement. I want them to go after the real criminals. I want them to go after like tax evasion, unpaid parking tickets. Real criminals. <laughs> <laughs> Tax evasion! <laughs> Murderers. <laughs> Fucking hell, it was Adam Rowe! <laughs> what tax evader wears a mask? A whole <laughs> episode of us just going through someone's receipts. <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> Says here, dressing gown, Doesn't mate. add up! Yeah. HBO's, dressing gown, John Lewis, yeah. come on. HBO Scooby-Doo. <laughs> it would be good if they were actual naughty people, though. Yeah. We caught, like, the murderer. Yeah, it's just to kill six people. That's yeah, definitely a kid's cartoon, isn't it? But I like where we're going with it. Let's make kids' cartoons naughty. Go. 
<laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Carl does this occasionally. He goes, oh, I've got a good idea. No idea how you're going to finish it. Like, Just fucking was that in there. What about Dexter's lab? But it's based in Wuhan and they release a deadly pathogen and causes a global pandemic. Right. Dexter's bad. That could be contentious, yeah. Why? Uh, didn't happen, did they? Right. Oh, so, so not based in realism, so. <laughs> Adam's the writer, says that. So... So it's based in Wuhan and it's about the coronavirus that started in Wuhan. But you're I, like, I didn't say coronavirus, I said the deadly pathogen and called oh, it something else. Oh, okay, okay, the okay. Budweiser virus. But you'd want it to be in Wuhan. Yeah. Cool. Because they didn't do it, did they? Tr- t- like, they said they didn't do it. So Trump, if they Trump didn't supporters do it, will love it. Yeah. Well, no, they said they didn't do it. What are they going to sue me on? Oh, they, this, this uh, thing he's written is absolutely no basis in reality. Are you going to go and sue the writers of Back to the Future as well? No, I'm, either. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Well, I'm there. Oh, yeah. It's totally made up and it's never happening. Oh, would you? <laughs> Who are you suing? Uh, do you do you not think they're getting fucking. <laughs> even at, Scott, even I lost the, tra- the trail of that one. <laughs> that all made sense. <laughs> See, my, my kids don't really watch normal telly anymore. They sort of like just scroll aimlessly through unboxing videos and shit. And when, like, you know, we're all, you're making a lot of content and stuff, but then you look at, like, these unboxing videos and they're getting, like, 45 million views of a kid in America opening a My Little Pony. Have you, you watched them, though? Because they are quite... I've watched people open trainees and it's fucking addictive. Really? I watch tech unboxings a lot. Well, maybe oh, that shows I've fucked that then, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Again, it's it's, it's definitely it's, an age different thing. I can't. I have no interest in watching anyone open anything. If I was sat here right now with a Kinder Egg, you wouldn't be able to take your eyes off it. <laughs> well, I'd, just... be, I'd be mesmerised <laughs> I, Do you know what I think I might be able to Glimpse sideways once or twice <laughs> God open it Are they into it The YouTube thing? The YouTube thing's dangerous though Because when <laughs> When Etta's got YouTube The most annoyed she ever is Is when you're like That's enough YouTube now yeah. It's literally try, like, like taking a fucking Heroin needle away from someone It's uh, it, the whatever it does, whatever gets in their head, like however, like, it's so interactive the way they can just yeah, scroll yeah. through it. Yeah. Like I was saying on holiday uh, earlier in the year, they didn't understand that we were watching Freeview. They were like, "This is boring." Next, yeah, like, no, it's just TV. You can't <laughs> nip back, and they're like, uh, I, 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 "What's I, this shite?" I had to explain to mine that you can't fast forward adverts in real time. The other day, <laughs> just said, so she said, "Can you spin on?" No, because this is now. <laughs> You're asking me to be a time lord, mate. Like, do you know what I mean? This is, we have to sit through this shit. This is life. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember, yeah. And it's just, they won't sit through We used to enjoy the advert. But then, but then they're watching programmes like Postman Pat, who's flying around in helicopters and shit. What? Postman Pat's been given an helicopter. Has he? Has yeah. Adam started writing for Postman Pat? <laughs> no, if, if you watch it now... Oh, it's the most amazing it's, level up ever. But this is, but the most annoying thing is, they're, they, they're like if you're a kid, like a letter down the back of a chair or like back of his van or a flood, that's like high octane. But now they go, no, that's not enough for kids. Hang he's got to be in an helicopter winching a dairy cow He's not just cliff. got a helicopter. <laughs> he's got a speedboat. Yeah. He's got <laughs> abseiling it's equipment. insane. Watch an episode of Postman Pat. It's like Postman Pat and someone's trying to hide money. It, but like it, it's it's tax evasion Postman Pat. It used to be one bloke in what you assume is the Lake District yeah. with a cat and a van. Yeah. Now he's got uh, he's got the helicopter, he's got a speedboat. Quad it's, bike. He's got a quad bike. The new vehicles it's, come every week. It sounds fucking oh, incredible. incredible. I want to watch it. They're doing well. But this is why they've got no attention span because he's wandering around like he's the fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's why they just great. can't focus, because it's like... Is it still called Postman Pat? Yeah, special delivery service. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Jason Statham movie, huh? <laughs> special delivery service. Yeah, it is. But that's like... I, I don't. You've got to question where that fucking money's coming from, though, and it? Yeah. Where's the helicopter coming from? You've got a Lake District post office, and you've got a fucking helicopter. Yeah, it's Pablo Escobar. <laughs> that's where it's <laughs> going. Fucking... Sounds like Pablo Escobar. Scooby, yeah. Pablo Escobar delivering little... Drug deals. Hot low esca post. Well, yeah. I Improved th- it there. <laughs> Dan's um, never been a fan of wordplay, have you, Dan? I know that um, about you. Um, it's, it's words. <laughs> it? Different words. Puns. <laughs> you hate puns. So, uh, some puns. Sounds. <laughs> some sounds. What even just... You're not giving me Pat Loesca post? 
Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> not giving him that one. That's good. Pat but when he, but when he's in a mental mood, he's like he's like just waiting to see one. <laughs> Patlow, Extra Bar. Ah, fuck. <laughs> Gay pop. <laughs> that was you from before. That was good. That one. Mm. Uh, Gay pop. Where's K-pop coming with your kids? You've got like 10, 5-year-old, don't you? Not into it. What's eldest, going on? Ed, eldest is into manga now. Oh, she's fucking cool. Yeah, but then I'm like, she was like, can you buy me some? And then I was like, I, I, I was I was looking at it and was like, no, because someone's getting their head lopped off. <laughs> I mean, loads of it's really violent, isn't it? So oh, so- my God. You're talking about manga, as in like the... Yeah, what do you I know? thought think- in your accent, you just said mango. So I thought you'd said, my one's into mango now. She's asked me, could I get her some? And I was like, no, because someone's getting, just getting chopped off. <laughs> I thought <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like avocados, like they're, they're really bad for the farmers and that. I thought like there was a big mango conspiracy theory where they, they were beheading people. How violent is your local Sainsbury's? <laughs> <laughs> people going in there going, can I have a mango? <laughs> 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 blood just to try. That's the way, a rinse. That's the way they tell the story of Liverpool, though. Don't go in my fucking local spa and ask for a mango. Get decapitated. <laughs> was that the first giveaway that it was weird? Like, what's what's your kid into? Mango. Mango. Yes, yeah, what she's asked for Christmas. She's a normal kid. She wants just an exotic fruit. <laughs> like, oh yeah, a mango. It's, yeah, it's good, a middle good class for you. apple and orange. Just a mango in the sock. There's <laughs> a great big mango in there. I thought mango. It, it all made sense. Yeah. Manga. Yeah, but she's into that. And we're going to Comic Con. Oh, sick. Like it's a Comic Con. I've never been before. She wants me to dress up. You're dressing up? I don't know. I don't even know what to do. Do you like, do you, from your childhood, do you like any comic book characters? Not, well, yeah, I spoke Batman. Do you know Batman? <laughs> about simple, you're just going to look like just fun. Goes, you're I just going to look like, as a compliment. I'm going to like Holy Fools and Arse. You've got a good face shape for Batman, you know? Yeah, you have. The bottom of your face is Batmanish. Yeah. Got a really, really good chiseled jawline there. Yeah. yeah. And also, yeah. you're over 40 and you'll be wearing a Batman suit and you'll look like Fathers for Justice. So that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, good for him. He actually got his kids back. <laughs> well done. And he's took him to Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, don't worry. Dad. When the police turn up, yeah, okay, I've broken the restraining order, but you're my kids as well. You've got so to dress up. Yeah, I, I know I have, have to, to dress up. But yeah. then it's like I've almost done it on the fly, innit? it? If it was like Fathers for Justice, custody, we're in the suit, Comic Con, let's go. <laughs> Where is Comic Con? Is it not? It's in an arena. It's all over in the Nottingham. world. Yeah, I've never no travel the world. Yeah, it's all over the world. Yeah, I just did. I on. Yeah, I've just never. You're, you're the same. We're not. I've never been into it that much. No, I it, would go, and I would fully. Dra- oh, that could be a Patreon special. The lids go to Comic Con. Oh my, we wouldn't belong. There, Genuinely, we, we say some things for Patreon specials that I don't believe in, and I think are dead silly. <laughs> this is fucking gold. Yeah. Who are you going as? The penguin. <sighs> <laughs> I'm gonna be like you, bad man. Who's that? Stacey from East End. <laughs> just, she always says that. It's my go-to. That's so how she leaves the room. That's why she got sacked off East End. Because she kept saying that, even though it wasn't in the She kept script. doing it. She kept doing a Batman impression. It was uh, you guys. Uh, I love Batman. Batman's my... You can't go as one of the main ones. Yeah. Like that's boring, isn't it? Uh, Catwoman. Okay, I'll give you that. I've got to go as one that doesn't look sinister. Dr. Robotnik from Sonic. Yeah. Oh, is that the one that Jim Carrey's just played in the Sonic yeah. film? Yeah. I thought that was Rob Delaney when I saw the poster. I was like, <laughs> fucking hell, he's doing well. No, it's Jim Carrey. I've got to go as one of the cool sort of marvel Iron Man sort of era. Thor. Go as Thor. But I, yeah. There you, you go. go. Hold that. Hold that. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel that your is, that when is... you When you order Thor off Wish. <laughs> He just comes and puts up shelves and then leaves. Um, I just can't go as one of the, like the cutesy Disney. You know, you don't do that as a. Oh, is Ant Man? Ant Man. Paul Rudd's great. I He's the Paul shittest. Man. That's the one of the shittest ones. No, he, he climbs up Thanos' ass and then expends him himself and kills him. De- I like Deadpool. If we're gonna, if we're gonna go, I thought Deadpool was good. Is okay. that a bit? Is that a bit Comic Con hack though? Plus, but I've got psoriasis, so it's like. Okay. I'm halfway there. The right. thing with going as Deadpool is it double, doubles up as a gimp suit for yeah. Bond. other parties. Cool. So that's the add-on to the patron, <laughs> sp- patron special after dark. <laughs> is, there not, is there not like a My group? My Scooby-Doo bumming. What? Is there not like a group of five? Do they, is that another like, Avengers? The Jackson Five? We'll go as I the Jackson that Five. <laughs> I to love that comic. Con. To Comic Con. <laughs> Chinese accent. I'd love, I'd love that coming in in a sequence dancing across the <laughs> arena. No one would question it. Bagsy Tito. 
Do you like dressing up, though? I find it is a bit forced jollity when everyone says fancy dress. I once went to a fancy dress party, and the person whose fancy dress it was, party was, didn't dress up. <laughs> Because they wanted to be different. Yeah, so they just sat there in normal I, clothes and everyone... That's an absolute <laughs> cunt move, isn't yeah. it? Move. Fancy dressing, you do have to wear it. Ah, fuck you. Yeah. I uh, I quite like fancy dress, or the idea of it, and then once you're in it, you're just like, oh, this is just annoying. Do you know what I mean? What was the last fancy dress you did? Um, a pimp. I was a pimp. I was <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> It was the whole film. <laughs> I was going to say, which character? Tom Cruise from Top Gun. He was Tom Cruise, yeah. I learned some my suit. Uh, I was the pimp. And what else did I do? That's it, isn't it? You went pub. There, there was one more, but I can't remember what it was. You went pub, you went pub golf. When was a golfer, I suppose. But the, the pimp... The the pimp one was fine. The top gun one was annoying because you're in a boiler suit and every time you need to have a wee, you have to take you basically have to get undressed. Yeah. And you're in a one, onesie, aren't you? Basically? Yeah, it's yeah. just annoying. I'd rather just be in my normal clothes. He's a fucking shit out him. I've told I you. I went in the set. You wore my Tom Cruise outfit. Do you know about? I bothered it because you weren't wearing it because you went to Danny Zuko and just wore the clothes you wore the week before. No, because I'd worn that face. the night before. There's pictures of us on my knee. He's that cunt. Bollocks. Right. There's pictures of me in it when he's a pimp. Was this a party or something? It was a pimp. Just me and Carl and his. <laughs> <laughs> Playing FIFA on Halloween. <laughs> right. I'm going to fix this buzzing on this line. Uh, we will be back shortly. Adam, get off your phone. We're going to do a Manscaped ad. I'm reading what they want us to say. All right, we'll crack on. Hello, ho, 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 gentlemen. The holiday season is upon us. And this week's episode, like many others, is brought to you by our partners at Manscaped. Com. They've just released a body wash and a shampoo that goes on top of the Performance Package 4.0, including the lawnmower. This is the best in below-the-belt grooming for men worldwide. And with this podcast, you get a bit of discount and free shipping worldwide with the promo code WORD20. They do. <laughs> they do. Was a Dan's a great help with adverts. You shave your balls, your missus will smoke at a pipe with a face a little bit more often. And she could use it to trim the pum pum. She can. And there's the weed whacker. You can shove that up your nose. You won't have hairy nose or earstrals anymore. And her arse. And her arsehole. Shave her <laughs> arsehole. Shave everything you can possibly find hair on in your house. Shave the cat. You can do whatever you want with the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. And you'll get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the promo code WEIRD20. In all seriousness, these products are the absolute dogs shaving bollocks. And they make a perfect Christmas present. Quality. So go and get yourself some stuff right now and enjoy the rest of the episode. Peace. I hope I mind. You all right? Um, just quickly, I'm doing a gig in New Brighton. On April the 16th for Brett Vincent, who we mentioned. Yeah. He said there's only a few tickets gone, and I, uh, I'm i recording it, and I, I want it to be good. So it's called The Joke Shop in the anti-super supermarket. If you're, I've already done this gig, and it's fun as fuck. There was only about 80 of them when I did it. But even with that, it was amazing. And if they end up getting 100, 200 people in that room... It'll be a phenomenal gig. And if you're doing it, yeah. What, when when so is it? So Thursday, the 16th of December. And it's a good bill. And it's in New Brighton, isn't it? Yeah. Which is, is New Brighton like, it's on the Wirral, but it's Scouse, isn't it? No, no. it's not Scouse. Do you think it's, they are? Right. But it's sort of like... It's probably the Scousest bit of the Wirral. Yeah. All right. But it, they're still walls. But people who live there work in Liverpool, don't they? Some. Yeah, probably. But people who live in Birkenhead work in Liverpool. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. It's one of the surrounding areas. So if I'm like, our lids are in Liverpool. About, oh, oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Take the fucking trek to the yeah, seaside. Easy. It's only a Is short. that where you go on your scouse holidays sometimes, the seaside? <laughs> yeah, for three weeks, yeah. <laughs> go travelling. I go travelling. Three weeks. <laughs> <Matthew> Brighton. <laughs> go travelling around Did you New take Brighton. a gap year around the world? There's a Machu Picchu in New Brighton. Yeah. Is there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like you're six. thinking of a uh, McDonald's. McDonald's. Takes six weeks to get there. Yeah. You're thinking of McDonald's. Yeah, but it takes six weeks to get there. It's a drive through Machu Picchu. <laughs> We've got some questions, Scott. Um, just be. on the subject of gigs that we're doing, um, a lot of people have been asking me about some extra tour dates. So Runcorn's now been announced and is on sale. Blackpool sold out and the second date is now on sale. Manchester, the third date, is very close to sold out. So the fourth date is on sale. And finally, Bristol. Uh, I've confirmed it just before we started recording today. So that should be on sale by the time this goes out uh, for to add for me tour for next year. There are a, at least one more Liverpool date being added and hopefully two, which will be announced this week, I hope. Um, and there's some very special, exciting stuff coming with those two 
Liverpool tour dates. So please keep an eye out for that. And as always, you can get tickets for all these shows and the rest of the tour dates that aren't quite sold out yet at adamro.co.uk forward slash shows. Um, and fucking Dublin already up and sell that Monday out that's the slowest one the Sunday sold out straight away and the Monday's just trickling up yeah, like it's fine it's already going to be good but just fucking hurry up everyone's been begging for Dublin for ages fucking come to Dublin Monday the 23rd of May Adam Road at Code UK forward slash shows I've oh, added shit. South Shields most as well. I've added aggressive. South Shields. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how we do it. We tried it's to the we, most aggressive sales pitch. We tried I to get on top of the pops by threatening everyone. That's Literally, I'll <laughs> come round if you don't come book on tickets. Don't be lady. I'm going to shout my set through your letterbox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, just while I was on the subject, Elton John is a fat knobhead. He is a muppet. I'll punch his head. Fucking come on! Do you want a bit of this? Do you want a bit of Elton and Ed? <laughs> and Dublin buy the fucking Monday tickets. Scott, you're on tour. I am, yeah. I mean, my, I, 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 I'm just, if you want to come, you can. <laughs> That's the most pacifist approach. I'm on tour starting next year, yeah, in uh, all over, all over the country. Not Dublin. They don't. <laughs> You're doing Dudley, though. I'm doing Dudley. No, I mean, I was going to do Dublin, but I wasn't aggressive enough to sell the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, starting, when do we start? May, May, and then a few dates, May, June, then rest of the year, sort of 20 dates on uh, scottbennettcomedy.co.uk forward slash tour. Good luck, mate. We've got a... Uh, gonna be, the reason I got aggressive with Dublin, I put a small room on sale on the Sunday and yeah. it sold out immediately and I got hundreds of people go, ah, I tried to get Dublin. Blah, blah, blah. So I added a second date in a much bigger room on the Monday and at the minute it's like half full. I'm like, fucking hurry up. Yeah, you can understand your frustrations there. It's not the only reason you got aggressive though, isn't it? <laughs> it's also because... You're aggressive. I'm an aggressive man. I know. But a very gentle lover. Uh, yeah. Got some questions. I'll stroke your hair while I'm fucking you. <laughs> there you go. That's nice. <laughs> Come on. Shh. Which part of the body is that? What? Oh, that's just the... It's her back hair. <laughs> Pelt. That's her mane. <laughs> Shagging a hyena. He's getting into horses. <laughs> Shut up laughing. Well, it's back to that bestiality thing. If you can fuck a hyena, I think you should be allowed. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. They there should be no it. laws against that. In fact, I don't even know if there is. <laughs> is <that> fucking <laughs> yeah. If you're into hyena sex, have at it. <laughs> even the Africans are like, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll sell tickets. Can you imagine if like you got into like a, a wild part of somewhere where hyenas are? Kenya. Kenya. As a guess. Right? So you're in you're in uh, the Kenyan outback. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Always the outback. Doesn't matter which country. It could be Buenos Aires. It could be fucking real. Take me to the outback. You know Take the, me to the outback. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in the it. Kenyan outback and you walk into this like field full of uh, hyenas. Field? Right. <laughs> and, you field. Go to the, and you go to the first hyena. Would you try heroin? <laughs> <laughs> There's a school of hyenas, right? That is not the collective it's noun. It's a bastard of hyenas. A bastard of... No, so, it's an absolute twat of hyenas. It's an absolute <laughs> twat of hyenas. <laughs> Right, it's a, they're called a stag do. They're called a stag do, <laughs> and they're all like, <laughs> and they're like going for you. But then you get your dick out, and they're like, "Oh, he just wants to fuck," and they just spread the legs and like, "Go ahead, fuck me." Do you Sorry. know where I think your career could take you? The next David Attenborough, <laughs> <laughs> but like a really sort of like you know. X-rated version of yeah. Attenborough. Where even Go the on, camera crew go, listen, this is Planet Earth after dark. I don't think that one's going to be commissioned by the BBC. That's got Sky written all over it. Yeah, I'm Vice. Adam, look at that fucking hyena. Dirty bitch. I'm Panorama. <laughs> I'm Vice. I'm not saying. I'm saying. Shags animals. Hmm? Hyenas don't look. This doesn't look fun. Scott, what's the, th what's the animal you'd shag if you had to? Um, any animal, but you uh, have to. Any animal. I think the dolphin... Right, so it's blow hole. Yeah, because I think then, what, you, if you haven't got any particular girth, the, the, it's in, it doesn't matter because the blow hole is tiny. Yeah. And also that's... That's not shagging it! Well, it, I mean, so yeah. if you've got a little dick in the blow hole and if you've got an enormous one, right up the batty. Yeah, but then also, <laughs> just the, you're on about the stroking, it's that sort of wet aubergine oh, feel. Yeah. yeah, You know, that sort of the, the, the velvet Can skin. I ask Scott? Because you've cho chosen an animal of the sea, it's an unusual... Are you going for the home or away leg? <laughs> Obviously, 
<laughs> you're gonna, if you're going to bang a dolphin, are you getting in the water? Or are you getting... Oh, I'm definitely getting in the water. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean it, would, it would obviously come with a... You'd have to scuba. You'd have to be a decent <laughs> scuba. You'd have to get, enroll... I mean, that is a plan in for a shag because you'd have to enroll in a scuba school. Right. I think they were selling these on the harbour in Croatia. You know, on one of the excursions. Yeah. Do you want to go to the Five Island Tour? Or do you want to go dolphin fucking? No, well, yeah. I remember in Florida when I saw some perverted little children getting in the water. I was like, you dirty little you bastards. Know, have you, have you, them. I swam with dolphins once. We on our what? Yeah, we swam on our honeymoon. It sounds like it was going to be magical, and it was the bleakest thing. It was like trafficked dolphins. Where was your honeymoon? It was in Malta, in a and garage. they sold it like this day trip. They said, "Oh, it's going to be amazing." They go, what you say again? In a garage. <laughs> but they said, "Oh, this is going to be. It's going to be amazing. This. It's going to be like you're going to take them in the natural environment. It was literally like a sea world." That they were just trapped and they couldn't move, and it was just—I just felt bleak. It was <laughs> really bleak. You were swimming with dolphins. It wasn't got a bath with dolphins. With dolphins. <laughs> it was having a yeah. Oh, it was wow. basically having a bath with a dolphin. <laughs> bath with a dolphin would have been foot spa with a dolphin. A bath with a dolphin, though, like that sounds fun. Both have a little glass of wine. Ooh. But they had to take you had Hot to take tub. your um. What's a romantic bath with so a dolphin? That's the opposite ends. Like, I like dolphin. Oh, it's really nice. Where's a dolphin? Where's a dolphin's pussy? I don't know, Carl. Do you want to Google that one? <laughs> you Google that one. I don't think it's the blowhole when you think like, it's I in its chin. Why'd you think Why? that? <laughs> 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 it's a well-known fact. It's a little-known fact. It's actually. a little-known fact. Not everyone knows. Oh, we had to. More had people to now. <laughs> <laughs> so buy those tickets for Monday night in Dublin. <laughs> Where Adam will be closing with his <laughs> chin pussy bit. Adam, do the Dublin for do the chin pussy bit in Dublin. We love it. It's Dublin. It's Dublin. Dublin, well, Dublin. You had to take your, your jewellery off so you didn't scratch them, right? So I'd I had took my wedding ring off. That night I put it back on, put it on the wrong finger. I had to go to A and E in Malta and have it cut off. So what Genuinely, you jammed it on the wrong finger. Put it on the wrong finger, sat there at, at dinner. Gemma was like, You got the ring on the wrong finger, mate. And I, I couldn't get it off. And like, uh, they all sort of staff came with olive oil, started rubbing my finger and stuff. Oh, because your so hands were the least romantic right. evening in my life. And at night, I could feel it swelling. Like, I had a massive sort of foam finger. How did you get it on? Because your hands were cold from the water. Yeah, just put it straight on, put it on the wrong finger, not used to it. I had to go on A&E, &E, have it cut off. And I think it was like a porter who did it, not even a professional. He had a bin under his arm. It was weird. <laughs> what fucking wedding ring have you got that can scratch dolphins? <laughs> Which is the, any, any jewellery. You're looking mate. like Don King. <laughs> I'm going to take all my jewellery off. But yeah, any anything. like You've got to do a full shredder on them, can't you, with a, right. any little bit of metal. And was there any... Listen, this sounds very insensitive... <laughs> But in Malta, with the swim with dolphins, obviously there was one couple on the honeymoon. Yeah. Was there any children who it was the last sort of, you know, swim with dolphins? No, none right. of that going on. Yeah, that's no. a tricky cue to be at the front of, isn't it? When you're celebrating, like, <laughs> going, we just want to celebrate our love. Little Timmy's not gone long left. Well, he's going to have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm taking my wedding ring off, mate. I've got to... <laughs> uh, questions? Uh, questions? Yeah. Questions. Wag wag lids. Um, after listening to every episode, I think it's fair to say you guys hate corporate gigs. Therefore, how would you appro approach organising a corporate gig if you have to, to make it more tenable? You've got the budget, you control what's going on, but you have to put on comedy at a corporate gig. Love the pod, keep up the amazing work. Cheers, Ollie. Okay, so first of all, open an act, table magician. Yeah, have him going round while the food's being delivered. Then... One of the waiters is the comedian and they whip off their waiter uniform, throw a load of spag ball all over the place and just start <laughs> doing the set. 20 grand each. <laughs> wow. Who's, who's famous comedian? Because 20 grand sounds like famous no. comedian money. No. There's not every comedian can pretend to be a waiter. It's true. <laughs> and then throw out that spag ball. True. 40 grand. Yeah. Table magician. Said I get to control the budget. I'm booking myself. Oh, you're the you're the wait you're the waiter. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Why am I not giving myself this twenty grand? In fact, if I'm two million, <laughs> Why am I limiting myself to twenty grand? What is me budget? Go on. What? What's two a, million to throw spot? A real <laughs> two a realistic, the budget. A realistic budget, I think, for a night of corporate entertainment is probably going to be around the ten grand mark in it. Somewhere mm, okay. five to ten. 
Mm. And then they're going to, as a promoter, like, well, obviously I have to take half of that because I lifted up a phone. Yeah. And I, I, like, fucking dialed a number. So obviously I need five grand. So, ten grand then. So, how much do you think a jazz quartet costs? <laughs> Are you trying to ruin their corporate <laughs> night? Oh, shit, that's the way. Just literally comedians that I don't like. Fucking brilliant. I would actually go to that. Who? I'd, pick all the co- I'd make sure the corporate event was a nightmare. Massive, like, yeah. huge flowers on each table. Big round table. I, I'd dance ask floor. for Massive oh, dance. a huge dance, dance floor. floor. Is there a DJ? No, Dan, the promoter's being yeah. a cunt. What about and, one table that's no big enough to s- fill the room <laughs> and the, t- the comedian stands in the middle of the table? Beautiful. The UN. Yeah, like the UN. <laughs> like the scene in Ali G where they all get fucking <laughs> stoned. That table. Wow. What, one big table? Yeah. Yeah. One big table. What about one with a hole in like a donut that you're pinned in in the middle? No, you you have to keep revolving to entertain What about people? the hole in the middle, but in the hole is a trampoline and you have to bounce the entire time you're in your set? Yeah. <laughs> this corporate gig is for... I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Children, this is at a primary school. I, did you enjoy the bouncy comedian? Yeah. <laughs> a, a table that can move. So you do one joke to like one person. They yeah. go, no. And then they move you along. Do the next one. How Sorry. How would though? Let's say your budget's 10 grand. You've spent, you spent five on a band, right? Or like a whatever. So you've got five grand for a comic. How would you make that comic's gig at a corporate? So they're having... They're having a meal, right? Three course meal. They're doing the company awards, which are going to take about 45 minutes. And the comedian has to do a half hour set. How do you set that room up? And how do you sort of organize the evening so that the comedian has the best chance of possible of absolutely smashing the gig? It's about the the venue, isn't it? And how you set the venue. Because really a good comedian if you give them a chance, we'll probably be able... When when it's after all of that, it's after the awards, it's after the meal, everyone's hammered, you're going on stage at 11, 20 minutes at 11 doesn't sound like much, you're fucked, aren't you? Yeah. That's hard work. Game over. Could you have a separate area where you just have theatre-style seating and a little stage and go, do you know what? Come in, have some drinks, settle yourself down, we're going to have a comedian to get the night going. And we'll do the awards here and then move to your table and that's where we'll have the meal. Yeah. Like, is it possible? Comedian it, opens the show. Because it's like... Absolutely. If you really... If you got total control, that round table thing that everyone wants for their corporate events, that's the problem, isn't it? It's yeah. fucking grim. So theatre style sitting in a corner. Just have a little corner, like a comedy club corner. Yeah. The, the comedian goes on, does half an hour. Goes, nice one. Uh, gonna have a little break now before the food comes out, um, so you can go and get a drink and a ciggy and whatever. Then your food will come out. Then we're gonna do the awards, and then to close the night, we've got All Saints. <laughs> if, I, if I had to guess, if I had to guess, who was nowhere. closing that show? I came out of nowhere, and we've got a free drink from Honky Pop. Can you imagine? Can you imagine them getting that call? All Saints management. We've got a corporate. It's in Birmingham. It's <laughs> near the five NEC. The Can you read They've been literally dusting off the grams. fucking phone. Like they have <laughs> one phone. Oh my God, the All Saints phone. Yeah. That, you, you, I've just also added the budget. If it's, say you've got five grand for comedians, instead of just five grand on one knobhead, who admittedly five grand's good, do that. I've done corporates where like, there's a compare and there's two acts. Yeah. And there's like, we do a 45 minute bit of stand up and then it's the awards. That's a nut. Like if we're really trying to make it tenable, I love the ones where they're like, yeah, there's two of you and we've got a compare and the compare is a battle hardened. You've mm. done some fucking, like S- Scott and I are, are really good mates from ringing each other after gigs and whatnot. Yeah. Some of the it's gigs- like CB radios, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. You, some of the gigs that you ring me, like not now, because things are going better, but like <laughs> the golf club gigs that you oh. rang me after, he's like, Dan, I've just done a golf club. It wasn't good. I'm like, I know. It's that, it's that thing of like, fundamentally, you're a guy entertaining a lot of white, White old men, yeah, sat in sort of penguin suits, and you walk out there going, "This is fundamentally wrong. This this whole idea is wrong." And I've I've had somewhere genuinely, I feel like I'm dying inside in real time. If you looked into my eyes, there's bits of my soul just crumbling. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like it's like I don't know. It's, I don't understand what they are getting from that because they hear me and think, "Oh, he's just like mainstream." 
we've talked about this before, I can do that, he's a gag man and stuff. And when I start talking about myself, they look at me like I'm Ross Noble. <laughs> like, what's he doing? We don't care about your wife and kids, mate. Where's your jokes? Yeah. And then you start, then, then uh, those events. Tell us about the two Asian gentlemen and the homosexual who walked into a bar. It's yeah. unbelievable. And then they go, they go like, oh, uh, are you going to, are you the comedian? Yeah. Mention Dave, he's, mention his wife. Like, don't, they'll give you no other backstory. I had a fucking email the other day from someone saying, me mate's coming to your tour show in London. Here's a load of stuff about him. Make sure you rip him. That's I'll be with him. I nearly, like I've just blanked it, but yeah. I wanted to reply and go, don't fucking come. Send me your PayPal. I'll send you your fucking money back. You <laughs> daft cunt. Fuck off. Because it's the roast of my mate. But also, the worst thing is, is you'll do that bit, and the person who suggested it doesn't laugh, and the person who you're attacking has got some dark secret about his wife that you've now unraveled. Oh, that... You know I mean? He just storms out crying. Those corporate comics that are like, yeah, I like to just get a gauge of the room, get to know a few characters, then just get involved. Yeah. It's a dangerous game, that, isn't it? If you get one bit of bad information... Yeah. I think the corporate thing's all right because usually the money's more. But when it's like the golf club thing, I remember once I was struggling so much, like material wasn't working. I think the guy who introduced me was a frustrated comic and he was like, if this guy's shit, we can put the football on. It was during the World Cup. We could still watch the football. Then they gave you that mic. And, <laughs> if this guy's like, shit, we can put <laughs> the football on. We Please welcome football, on yeah, stage. That was literally, and then you're tethered from the DJ's mic. You've got like a metre of cable. So you feel you're like a dog outside a shop. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just sort of pinned. Like Woody from Toy Story yeah, with his little no, <laughs> his, his mic and speaking on no, the way. Everyone's got the back to you. And then you start sort of ch chatting and you think like, it's like literally free falling. And you're like, you're going like, I'll try the best bit of material, nothing. And then I sort of tried to chat to someone and he sort of said, I'm not helping you. That's what his response was. Oh. I'm not helping Ooh. you. So that was like the knife through the parachute. And it's just an awful... And you get to the end and you think it was completely pointless. The worst one I ever did was with... Um, it was booked by Phil Walker. And I they were like, oh, the food's on at eight. Mm. And I was like, cool, I'm a fussy eater, so what's my stage time? And they were like, oh, you'd probably be on about nine. I thought they'd just been like, oh, we're having food at eight. If you want a plate, then you should be there for eight. I didn't realise at round table events, you're meant to eat with them. Oh, yeah. And then they go... Well, uh, we've got the turn. He's on table six. And then you're just meant to like stand from the table. Thanks very much. Uh, the pudding was amazing. Let me tell you some jokes about Scottish people being tight. And everyone's like, <laughs> but so I just, because I'm a fussy and I don't like eating, I hate set menus. I was like, cool, I'll get there at nine. I was waiting outside. I, I, I died in such a spectacular way that it made the other comedian that was sort of in the back of the room, Jamie Sutherland, he was cringing for me it wasn't even one of those ones where you're like ha, 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 that was fucking good he was like oh god good god <laughs> like he'd seen like some shit it, it seemed a trauma it was a complete and utter rejection of everything about me <laughs> you know sometimes in a room of like old men there's some younger lads you're like come on lads you've got to fucking save me here yeah. even they were like you need to sort your fucking life out mate <laughs> it was awful died on my fucking hoop it's when you and the feedback the next okay. day with my, I was like, I told my agent, I was like, because it was when I had an agent, I was like, it was, a, it was, it was bad. It was autobiography bad. It was that bad. And the feedback was, first act we've had not eat the meal for 20 years. <laughs> and I had no, I literally wow. had no idea. Wait outside, just tell me my stage time, I'll wander on. They were appalled. Because you didn't Because I hadn't eaten at Lytham St. Tan's Rugby Club for their fucking whatever it was round table. First act that hasn't eaten the meal for 20 years. How could we listen to him? Oh, the wow. bastard. It was uh, that bad. That's fantastic. What? Who's asked about eating the meal? The round table cunts. Yeah. Why do they care? We see it as rude. If you do an after dinner, if you do like a sportsman's dinner. And you don't do the after, don't do the dinner. You just yeah. do the after. Yeah. So you've got to, eat, so you've got to sit and eat with them. He sits mm. at the top table at a, a sportsman's dinner. So on the stage, there's a long table. You know, like at a wedding? Yeah, yeah. There's a long table on the stage. There's the, the host, the guy who's organised it, the the you and the sportsman. And you're just having, on stage, just, yeah, having me bolognese. And With some alcoholic darts player like, is it my time? <laughs> I've got a story. What's the fucking point in that? I don't know, but... It's just a weird tradition. It's it's just the way they do it, yeah. And then the, the host goes up and goes, all right, what's happening? Then they bring the speaker on. 
and then you go on after the act they've all paid to see. <sighs> but then the, the sportsman as well gets an envelope stacked full of cash. Yeah. On the way out, they get like a bung. Yeah. And you get like <laughs> 40, yeah. count yours out yeah. begrudgingly. Yeah. <laughs> You were just as shit as the cunt we had last year. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. Um, oh my God, that's giving me like PTSD from fucking shit. And it's Christmas. Have you had any Christmas stinkers yet? Just had a, a, a woman who didn't understand it was a rhetorical performance and kept answering the questions that I was asking. Always fun. Yeah? Always fun. Yeah. Can I tell you what I think about that bit? Put the phone down. I was doing me, I was doing me GP's reception. Bit. Put the phone down. Ring him back. What, they said that was the heckle? Yeah. Advice? Yeah. <laughs> she thought, like, the problems I was explaining on stage, it, she thought I'd turned up, and it was at the MNS Bank Arena Auditorium in Liverpool. Yeah. There's a thousand people there. She thought I'd turned up and been like, does anyone know <laughs> the best way to get a doctor's appointment? Does anyone get any idea what I'm doing like wrong doing here? Because, you know, now. I've been trying for months, and I've written it into this humorous anecdote, but apart from that, I could really do it an appointment. <laughs> I hope she's not a fucking fan of this podcast and she's at home going, the, the dolphin's pussy's near the thin. <laughs> <laughs> she's an idiot. a fucking idiot. Have moment? you had any stinkers this year? Not really. I mean, we've had a couple where there's been 69 people in a works do. Like, just a general sort of lack of concentration, but nothing. But I think you always have those flashbacks, don't you, to the ones you've had in the past that have been horrendous. Just sort of ones where I've, I've had ones where I've gone in, there's been no heating on in the gig. They're all sort of sat there in the coats, like a hurricane relief situation. <laughs> well, like, on, like they're on a Duke of Edinburgh. Like that. And then you, you love this fear in the staff's eyes when they realise they've got to do like a free course Christmas lunch. Yeah. And they normally just do burgers. Yeah. Like, their heads are just like, they've got to be Heston Blumenthal. <laughs> I hate like, the smell I, of a roast when you walk in a comedy club in December yeah. and you can smell a Christmas dinner. Yeah. Like it's here, yeah. they're here. I was sat in the frog with John Hastings, Phil Ellis, and uh, Vince Atta last week, and we all got off at the roast dinner. And it was quarter to eleven at night, and we all had a few potatoes. Now I, I just burst out laughing. Phil Ellis was like, "What are you laughing?" At? I was like, "This is how sad our lives are. We're having a Christmas dinner in November at quarter to eleven at night because it's free." <laughs> <laughs> I, I told you the other night, the other day, off pod, the story. So last weekend, the hot water on the Saturday, it was a proper kickoff at the the second to last set I was doing. So I called these girls the Shield Road Night Out, which is a, a very famous prostitute street in Liverpool. And she hit a woman's head on the on, on her way out of the row in front of her because they're the ones who'd complain saying these are talking. And that's why I yeah. started dealing with them. So I went to the girl. I'm really sorry about that. I felt like I antagonised them. So I'll buy you a round of drinks in the next interval. How many of you are there? And she went, nine. I went, oh, fuck that. I'll buy you a drink. What are you drinking? And she went, nine beers. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, I, I just had a, a thought. I did a sportsman very quick. This is the worst and best thing I've ever seen. I did a sportsman's dinner with a sportsman I'll have to not name, but they've since passed away. Anyway, it was it was in this it was in near Liverpool actually, like a Mason's place, Masonic yeah. Lodge. Masonic yeah. Lodge. And we sat there and the guy just had a proper meltdown. Like he'd been drinking all day and like you could tell that like the atmosphere was bad. And he brought his driver, who was also like an ex gangster, I think, from Stoke on Trent. <laughs> and they, they sort of like he goes, My driver needs a meal. Right. This was the first thing he went, My driver needs a meal. And they, they sat him in between me and another, like a, like a kid's chair. <laughs> sort of like goes, he can sit here next to you. You got a high chair for me, and, driver. <laughs> and it was the most terrifying. Every conversation he did either started with violence or ended in violence. You know, like when you're having a chat with someone and you think at any moment he's going to chin me <laughs> as part of this story. <laughs> so he's a darts player. I'll, I'm not, I'll allude to who it was, but he was, he, you know, he was famous and then he, he torpedoed his career. And then everyone was asking him questions, and he was just down in Guinness. Bobby George? No, no, you're warm. But it was, it was, he was down in Guinness, right? And this guy next to me was just, he was just going on and on, talking about when he'd done a skydive. It was just madness. And I'm, I'm how did to... the skydive end in violence? <laughs> well, oh, no, because he said the guy said you can't go that high. I said I want to go that high. <laughs> and I said to him, he was getting really into it. And then I went, well, well what happened was he said I got him in an headlock. And I said, you're gonna have to let the let the wire out or something. I was shitting myself. <laughs> and then and then he sort of said, There's only one person in the world that can tame me, and that's my lady. That was like a moment of calm. 
like this guy next to me. And anyway, he went on, he, he answered all these questions and, and every question's like, one of them was like, what do you think of Ted Anke, who was a, a darts player? And he went, he stinks, next question. I like, just sort of said, you, you want to save, you know, you want to keep your money safe, hide it under a bar of soap. It's not a bad joke, that, actually. He said. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and his first meeting to me was, I like that shirt, do you know what that'll go well with? An iron, like really slamming me as oh. well. <laughs> Nice. And, and he gets to the end, and the guy said something like, "He, he, he, he sort of stopped. He, he tanked because he just he was he was too hammered, right? And he sort of downed a Guinness, crushed the can, and walked through. He, he and then they said, "Oh, um, if you want a signed picture, he's just said he's going to be in the bar and the fifty quid. <laughs> that was his final fifty note. quid, fifty quid for a signed picture. It's a fucking dream, huh? Yeah. But yeah, it was just awful. doing a Q and A pissed. I mean, we've we're basically. doing six quid each and two for a tenner on our top. <laughs> It was Raymond Van Barn. A lot of that sounded no. like the last dance. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> what about that comedian? You're like, fucking stinks. But it's also when you get, like, a guy come up to me just before I was about to go on, and this, I've never forgot this conversation. He went, are you a comedian? I went, yeah, yeah. He went, All right, yeah, it's good, isn't it, making people laugh and stuff. I went, yeah, yeah. And he said, I'm a funeral director, is what I do. I went, All right. He says, look at this. Show me on his phone. He'd had, like, a horse-drawn carriage that day, like a black carriage, like, with... Horses with purple plumage. And he went, see that? I see 26 year old she was. Young mum, all life ahead of her. And this is, you know, that was that was the other day. So it's not an easy job. <laughs> <laughs> I was stood there like, and he went, are you about to go on? And went, yeah. <laughs> he, went, he went, yeah, have a good one. <laughs> Just think about death while Just you're up there. That, that's, honestly, it was the weirdest night of my life and watching this guy... Ex darts player just torpedo his career. I think some with the great thing with comedy is like it, it, <laughs> there are so many great gigs, isn't there? Like mm. so many good gigs. But if we sat here and went, oh, do you know what another great gig is? Do you know what an oh, another one that I did was brilliant? It's just not interesting, especially to comedians. I literally want to hear about the Undertaker going. She just she had three kids. Whole whole, uh, li <laughs> whole life ahead of her, Dan. <laughs> whole life ahead of her. Shall we do some uh, have a word? Shall we? Have a word it, boys. I think uh, Scott could give some good advice. Uh, wag wag. Uh, my missus has the tree up already. She's had it up since the first week of November. Now, her birthday is on Boxing Day. So once Christmas Day is over, Christmas is done in our house. And Stephmas begins. Oh, fuck. So she gets the tree up early to get the most value out of Christmas. I think seven weeks is a bit much, though. Should I just tell her to get on with it, or do you think she's as ridiculous as I do? When do you guys get all the deckies out? Not sure who you need to have a word with, but I need help. What's your, uh, Scott, what's your Christmas, when are you getting out? I think it's getting earlier and earlier, isn't it? I think people are cl cl you know, wanting a bit of joy in their lives. Gemma does them. I don't <laughs> really do anything. I've told, I've told loads of people this. Gemma's completely control of my life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bliss. What, just just, just no, Christmas. No, the whole life. I don't think really now. <laughs> <laughs> I stop thinking. <laughs> so like we went, we go like she'll literally go to me on a Sunday. We're out today. Get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a kid. Come like, on, she, have you been very away? You know, genuinely, I'm a toddler in that situation. At the end of the day, we'll be driving home. You did well. Well done. <laughs> You did well there. Well done. Um, but yeah, she she'll sort of like do everything. She's incredible, really. I like. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to get to the point where I ask her actually if I like people. <laughs> do I like these people? <laughs> yeah, you like these. <laughs> Thanks. Oh yeah, Laura's got to the point I, where she's like, she's it's like having a like a press secretary. She's the like PA. If I was a politician. She just goes right. That one's just through been a, through a divorce. Yeah. She's like whispering oh, that divorce and they would just honestly it's like, it's like having a voice in my head. I was with, I was walking into Beeston where we lived the other day. It was like being out with the stroll with Mother Teresa. <laughs> She knew everyone. It took us ages. She's shaking people's hands. How's your, how's your extension going? Is it going all right? Brilliant. How's your dad? Has he come out of hospital? Well, do, how do you know all this? The backstory. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, it's embarrassing how monosyllabic I am. Stood behind her like this. I might as well be on a DS. <laughs> you going, going on tour, Scott? Yeah. You go on yeah. tour, yeah, sure. It's going to be fine. <laughs> going to go Dublin when I can be aggressive enough to sell tickets. <laughs> and, and literally, I'm like, I might as well be going, how's school, Scott? <laughs> so she, Gemma was up a ladder 
putting lights up on our bay window the other day. What were you doing? I was inside waiting to find out what we were doing. <laughs> but I, I don't, honestly, so ours went up uh, probably last week in November. But it is a bit early, man. It's too early. I think the it's last weekend in November, if, if you work nine to five and you've got to do it on a weekend day with your missus, fine. But it should be the 1st of December, of December as a rule. Always. It's got to be the 1st of December. First week of November is criminal. Yeah. That's a, a sixth of the year. And taking him down on Boxing Day because it's Stephmas. Yeah. She can suck a fart out of my ass yeah, all this I, one. Yeah, absolutely. Getting get in the line with behind Elton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say... The only thing that's fucking Cute. changed my opinion on this is the fact that the Christmas tree we've got has got like built in lights. We spent a bit of money there last Christmas, lad. And it's the the light coming off this tree is stunning. And I'm not allowed to fuck with extra lamps. I would have more like I'd light the living room up more. Yeah. Generally as soon as we get the Christmas tree, the, the living room looks so much nicer. Yeah. It's a bit dim otherwise. But actually, yeah, first of December. My tree went up properly last night and my little brother come round. And genuinely, I was so proud of this. Because my little brother is like, Carl, if he can insult me, he will. Do you know what I mean? And he come in and I went, what do you think of the tea? He went, Jack, lads, I genuinely mean this. That could be in an advert. It's <laughs> <laughs> high praise. B&M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this a could bottom. be in the window of Maxis and no one would bat a fucking eye. When did he come down, though? I have to admit, like, since you spent the money, when, when you spend a bit of money... That's when you're like, we get value out of that. Like, because yeah. we've got an expensive tree and expensive decorations, I want it up longer. So before, I'd be like, mate, as soon as New Year's Eve's done, as soon as you're on New Year's Day, hangover, should be down on the second or whatever. But I don't know. Sixth. I think the second to the sixth is the right window. Yeah. I think if you still got your Christmas tree up on the 6th of January, do you not feel like, as soon as it's after the New Year's Eve yeah. piss up, you'd, I'm done with Christmas then. I, I'm I, ready to crack on. I look forward to a tip run then. Between oh, Christmas yeah. and New Year, that's my boxing oh, day. Scott. When I can go go and do a tip run, and then you see all the discarded Christmas trees, and you're like, yep, yeah, the joy's done. Get back on with it. <laughs> Just a load of dads <laughs> in a queue. A load of dads in a queue. Because when the tip opens, that is like a moment of... After oh. the pandemic, <sighs> there was a two and a half hour queue outside our local tip. Yeah. And I was like, Laura, how the fuck are people sitting in it? And she's like, yeah, they're just dads who don't want to be I in the house. The yeah. the They've thing. just had a, a lockdown, and they're like, just want to sit in this car... We're doing nothing Putting for two hours. One piece of wood in at a time. What are you doing, <laughs> mate? Well, shut up! I'm taking, my taking my time. <laughs> Splitting down fence panels. I, I had the clothes clear out the other night. That felt good. Oh, it feels great. Just throwing away t-shirts that like I've lost. I've lost the dream the of bin. ever fitting back into. I've put them in a bin bag to go to oh, the nice. charity shop. Good. I just did the same thing, but with thin clothes. I'm not even messing. I've had a drawer of like. I'll get back in them. This week, I was like, oh, that's had, not happening. They're in the bin. I had a few T-shirts from my very slimmest last year, right. and I've thrown them away because I'm like, they're just making me sad. Yeah. Like, they're nowhere near me. Like, I am losing weight, and I'd love to fit back in them at some point, but if I get to that point again, I'll buy new ones because we're at yeah. least six months away from that. Yeah. Because I'm not trying to... In the past, when I've tried to lose weight, I've tried to lose it dead quickly, and I always put it back on. I'm doing a lifestyle change. It's going to yeah. be a while. When a medium T-shirt looks like Spanx, you probably need to just bin it, don't you? Do you not go through a system of T-shirts, though? Bed T-shirt before you chuck it? No, I, I, I don't wear anything in bed. Completely naked. Okay, good. So, that was the weirdly homophobic, homo homosexual moment. I was there. Homoerotic. Like, I don't wear anything in bed, Scott. <laughs> I, I, Get on are me. Are you dressed in bed? No, I go completely oh, naked. I'm head to toe naked, mate. Yeah, I I'm not head to toe. I don't like me. I, I feel vulnerable. But so I have my undies on. What are you vulnerable to? People who can't take undies off. It's just, if, if we ever get broken into, I feel more comfortable confronting the, the attacker with my undies on. Put them on before you confront them. No, that's a waste Valuable of time. time I've oh, already, I've already got to grab murdered. the axe. Yeah, that's how you get murdered and bummed. Yeah. Do you know why I stopped wearing underwear in bed? It's because when I was a teenager, I, I'd lost a testicle through it twisting. <laughs> and they, they said to me... <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I'm no, they, sorry, the doctor that? said to me, and it stuck in my head, don't wear underwear in bed. Because right. it can I don't. encourage a twisting. How tight were your kegs? <laughs> Did you really lose a, a testicle to twist? You twisting? only got one ball. Yeah. Oh, sick. My yeah. mates had one of them. Sick. Yeah. It, hap yeah. it happened, yeah. It, but apparently... It, what it, happened? Tell me the, sto tell oh, the story. No, it's going to be horrible. Oh, my, mate no, got, my mate got kicked in the bollocks and literally got one of his balls kicked off. 
Right, well, that sounds <laughs> more manly than, I had the wrong size underpants on. <laughs> Go yeah. on, Go on, Scott. So it, it's called torsion testes. <laughs> it's a genuine medical thing. So it sounds like something Audi would have in a car, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I it, lost like, one of my bollocks going 90 around the corner. That's Vosprin <laughs> bollock twist. But it, it, it's sort of, they twisted. And I remember because, like, you, I woke up, like, in absolute agony. Because I went to the doctors in the day and they said, oh, it's just a pull muscle, that. And he sort oh, of sent me balls. home. And then in the middle of the night, it was awful. Have you got pecs on your bollocks? Pecs. Yeah, like I muscles. Pulled muscles, pulled muscles. <laughs> so you had to, you, what? Been deadlifting oh, with So they, they all the wrap up? They twi- internally, not oh, like. like the Christmas tree you, lights. You think you can untangle them like nuns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spin them back like a swing the yeah. other way. Just get Gemma on them. <laughs> Take me time. Find the end. <laughs> Loop it through. Yeah. yeah, you find the end. But like, yeah, so they twist internally and it cuts off the blood supply. Fuck. And they have to remove it because you get gangrenous if not. So like you like um, yeah, so it's like gone one one plum tomato down there. Yeah. Right. Have you got a fake one in there? No? They offered me a fake one, but I was a bit. <laughs> like, like, I don't know why that's funny, but the idea that it is funny. Show you like tiles. <laughs> Which one do you fancy? Mate? Do you know what I mean? I Colour thought match about, it. I thought about having one big one. Next to the small one. Oh, yeah. That would be funny as well. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Jack, yeah, yeah. Like a game of crown green bowls. Oh, hum- <laughs> and and a jack. jack. And a jack and a big Who doesn't bollock. want an omni bollock? That's <laughs> just oh, a variant. <laughs> but I was like, because I, th- I always say, like, someone said, oh, why didn't you do it? Because I had a bit of a fear of hospitals because I didn't know I was, I didn't know I'd lost it till I woke up. Oh, I, went, I went in in pain, got put under, came round, bollock gone. Did a vet do this? <laughs> I woke, up, I, woke up, I woke up in between a dolphin and a Shetland pony. So I'm stroking your back. Do, do you know what I mean? How old were you? 15. All oh, right. I thought you were a grown man. Have you taken a bollock with that? <laughs> no. The Gee, you have to sign something as a grown man to be like, wake up. Oh my God, his dick yeah. and balls are gone. I tell you what, Gemma doesn't fuck around. I said, because I said, I said, to, I said to people, like people say, well, why didn't you do it? Because like, the last time I let someone loose, why didn't I have a fake one? With a scalpel, I lost a bollock. And it's like, you don't go back and park your car in the same street where someone nicked your alloys. That's the same <laughs> logic, and you don't go back and think we'll take the other one like some sort of human scrapyard. We'll yeah, keep my, that as a spare. My mate from growing up got kicked in the bollocks, and literally, like it separated his bollock from no. his bollock pipe, and they just took it off. Oh, his bollock pipe. They said that his bollock. That's off bollock pipe. So the doctor said, "Like, sit down, lad. Uh, so you've got two bollocks and two bollock pipes, and one of the bollocks is no longer attached to the bollock pipe. So what we're going to have to do is was that off, throw it in the Albert Hall with it, Liz, and you're going to be fucking yeah, Johnny, Mr. Yeah. One Bollock forever." And uh, and then uh, he said his name. And we're raising money for charity. Kids with spazzy eyes. Uh, no beds called Zoe. <laughs> uh, doctor Adam, where did you get your degree from? John Moore's go fuck yourself. <laughs> a John Moore's medical degree, that'd be funny. The University of Yamaha. Oh, my mate, the only reason I mention it as well is my, a friend of mine, I found out on a stag do that another lad who I'd just met, he had a one bollock as well, but he had a fake one. And then when we got shit faced later on, he got his fake bollock out <laughs> in the pub and started flicking it to prove that he couldn't feel anything. Oh, it was the grimmest stag do. <laughs> Ever. That, that's how you know when the energy's gone out of a out of a, a group of people when he goes like, right, get the bollock out. Go on, Johnny lads, show everyone your fake bollock. Yeah, yeah. We need to spice this chat up. Yeah. Um, should we uh, should we call it a pod? Call it a pod. You happy with that? Absolutely, Scott. It's been an absolute pleasure, my friend, to see you in person. We always speak on the phone in the car. It's Just remind everyone you. where you can get your uh, social medias and your tour tickets. So it's Scott B Comedy UK on Twitter and Instagram and scottbennettcomedy.co.uk forward slash tour for the tour. So yeah. And uh, also we've got, we're starting a new podcast, Gemma and I. We did the Shed thing in lockdown. Still Which on the massive. Facebook page. Yeah. Still on the Facebook page, Stand Up From The Shed. And we'll be starting a new one called Brew With The Bennets in the new year. Yeah, going through the pandemic, there was a handful of comics that came out of it looking better. Me and Adam were one of them for zooming our tits off. And you did a live show from your shed every Friday in, in, in lockdown. Yeah. And it went amazingly. It was a weird thing, isn't it? I think you all, like, everyone wanted to do something. I mean, you guys have built this. It's incredible. Like, I think you... You sort of, everyone want, had to respond in a weird way. I don't think it was by design. Or I mean, the, the momentum f- that got us here 
we it was weird because we were desperate, but that got the ball rolling t- to where we are now. Like, I don't know how long we would have been in my spare room. I don't know if we'd have started a Patreon. It was the we- like we were just do a pod a week, and that that lockdown made us kick it into a different gear. And we started turning out more and we started a Patreon and it changed how we were doing it. Same shit, still talking bollocks, but... Do you think if the pandemic... Sorry, mate. Well, oh, no, no, bollock. <laughs> <laughs> Just opening old wounds there. I had a <laughs> flashback. But I uh, can never open a tin of plum tomatoes <laughs> no, anymore. No, oh, awful. my God, uh, God. That hurt my fucking bum hole. Hair in those words. <laughs> I felt it in my bum hole. If you hadn't have had, the, if you hadn't had a pandemic, do you think you'd have done it? So we were already started. Oh, you'd already started, but do you think it would have accelerated? I don't know. I I think it changed how we were doing we it. We will never know. Yeah. Because, like, we'll just never know. I think it probably benefited us, but y- you never know. It could be even bigger than it already is. But We, we had a we conversation before the, we started the Patreon going, maybe we should just keep doing it for free, you know? And, like, the Patreon was the thing that stopped us delivering for fucking Amazon. So Amazing. I think it changed that. But But... It's misremembered that we were we were doing it for nearly three months before yeah. old Bojo, the lying fucking scruffy cunt, put us into lockdown. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Can you just, for me, I really feel like this next tour needs a Dublin date. If you could just do it to camera and just threaten the people of Ireland. <laughs> you haven't got it in you. I'll do it for I you. Can't, Listen can't. to me now, Dublin. <laughs> I swear to God, if I take you my could top be off my, my aggressive, not hype man. You could be my aggressive man. Whenever I need something dealing with me, I bring you in or I, I bring Adam in. Su- no, no, no. Aggression for enough. hire. Should be you. You think you got it all out? Yeah. <sighs> I don't think I can do a topless fucking pod two weeks in a row. I took my top off uh, in the that. last podcast. Yeah. It's quite. Yeah. A free, lot of freeing. Was I free? had more men. I think straight men sliding in my DMs than I'd like. Fun, weird reaction to getting your dad by but dad bod out on a pod. A lot of men just feel obliged to be like, I need to tell dad that Dan that yeah, I quite liked it. Like, yeah, cool. Cheers, thanks. I think there was something like quite primal about it. There was. Yeah, so I agree. I'm just, I think, uh, I'm just about to announce. I my, think you my are Dublin date, so it's worked out fine. See I think you, there, you are definitely going to get your top off at the live stream. I'm doing it topless. Yeah. Yeah. Hotwatercomedy.co.uk for a reason. Forward slash. Something. Oh, mate, buy the live stream. It's going to be fucking amazing. A Christmas party. Hey, hey. All right, Scott, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you, mate. Thank you so much. Cheers, Lids. Pre-order Laura's gone, please. Nice one. Get on me. Bye. Here we go.